The following show is for mature audiences only. Chai City Sports. So, what are you saying? I'm saying that the spit could not have come from behind. That there had to have been a second spitter. I did not see it. I totally missed it. I was looking down when I heard about it. He's looking down. <laughs> That's the problem. That's, there it is, coach. He's looking at his card for the next play. Just in general, it seemed like discipline was maybe an issue throughout this game and some unforced errors. Do you do, do agree with that? And can you pinpoint why that continues to be an issue? Yeah, no, you're you're exactly right. You're right. There is there is issues there. That that's what bothers me, and that's what pisses me off. Yeah, I think the Bears need to go back to Mitchell Trubisky. We oh! this is what one Rex. They got a great defense, right? Yes. What if you're the coach? What's the number one thing you would tell the quarterback not to do? Turn the ball over. Period. So then, Protect since the he's come in in that Atlanta game, he's thrown for five touchdowns and seven picks. Like whims. Hopefully, he learns from this. But there has to be accountability. Just like you see Jimmy Graham. We, I'm calling him. I've been the big Jimmy Graham supporter. What he showed out there today was bullshit. I think Matt Nagy gets paid to make these difficult decisions. And this isn't working. Like, this isn't, this isn't right. And on the other side, like, I disagree with Dan. I was kind of hard on the skilled players of the Chicago Bears, too. But Allen Robinson can go. No and this doubt, youngster yeah. from Tulane right down the street, Darnell Mooney, he can go. And so if you have a quarterback who understands that and you have an a offensive coordinator, you're talking about geniuses, uh, Rex. They say that Matt Nagy's a true genius. Big plays are nice. They're good. I mean, he was birthed under Andy Reid. Well, I can't tell because you're only scoring 17 points a game. Who's the leader on offense and what do we get? Hmm. Exactly. You're in year three under this head coach, and you don't know who the leader of this offense is? Just like Steve Edwards said, that's a fucking big problem. Just a, I can't believe it. I don't see any rhythm. I don't see any rhyme or reason. You know, a lot of coaches like to have 15 plays that they go into. That'd be a change for him. Just yeah. do something different for crying out loud. This disgrace are ridiculous. Those linemen are terrible. So now you bring in Mr. Trubisky and you scrap what you've learned. You scrap what you know. You take your ego and your pride out of it and you build your offense so Mr. Trubisky can succeed. So your offense can move. And if you don't do that, you're going to waste this great defense. You're going to waste your window and you'll be looking for a new quarterback in the offseason or at least the organization will. And they may be looking for a new head coach. Too. I told everybody Nick Foles is not a starting quarterback in the league. You said Anybody it. that would listen, he's not a starting quarterback quarterback he's an excellent backup put him in a backup role you bench the kid when he was three and old he was actually right, two right. and by the way yep. this organization right. they're brilliant also they passed on we all know it deshaun watson and patrick mahomes you traded up to get this kid why because he is an athlete yeah all right he has a chance and instead you just throw him out with the bath with the bath water for nick Foles. who is it's a disaster right there. The kid's a great backup. Jeff Hossettler was a great backup. Right. Was he a great starter? Hell no. So to me, you made the mistake here. Do you have the guts, Nagy, to do it? Because if not, I hope they. And, and I hope something play, happens. If they don't play. like what we do, then there's lots of other places for you guys to follow. This Bears team is fucking terrible. How do you handle internal discipline versus sort of also waiting for potential league discipline? Yeah, I really don't know that answer yet. You know, we'll we'll get through that and figure out how that works. I I haven't been through that before, so it's kind of new to me. So we'll just wait and see where that's at and and uh, collaborate together as an organization and figure out uh, what's next. Grow some balls, Jesus. Grow some balls. Grow some balls. Man, the. And so the Bears are sending their compensatory fourth round pick to Jacksonville for Nick Foles. I know we need to run the ball more. I'm not an idiot. Keep it 100. Keep it 100.
100. Chiefin is 100. Chiefin is 100. Smart man. Dr. Phil is the smartest man. Chicago Bears swag. Yeah. Don't come back. Who's back? The two dudes that kept it real. The dynamic duo that you love, the smartest man in Dr. Phil. Breaking down the film, never a problem, kick it straight. Most shows focus on stats, we focus on the tape. We keep it in a hundred, never running east or west. We coming with that truth, cause that's what our fans expect. Cut off the breaking anchor, move forward to be free. But don't you worry, Shane's got the dumbest tweets. It ain't no secret, Phil and Shane got some haters. But now the mouth stuck like the two and now and later. Debaters, get kicked like Table. Cuts had to be made, we added a barber moderator Up and down, boys got you double checking Sad sack strolling like a full drunk texting Flexing on the truth cause you know they'll never change Real, recognize real, that's what you get with Phil and Shane For hundreds what we do when we're breaking down the bears Fuck a play or a captain, all of the up The team never lies the truth, you see But I have to be so there's no babies like Maybelline Straight to the truth with acumen and facts We got a sad but it's not just giving her sad crash, big impact like Max Sat. Every Wednesday night you got the smartest man to feel bad. Now we know you're smiling like a fat kid with fun dip. We're back better than ever and we're keeping it a hundred. Keeping it a hundred, baby. Keeping it a hundred. Draft Dr. Phil and the smartest man. Keeping it a hundred. 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 Keeping it a hundred.
Because yeah. it ain't fucks it up for me. Because now I see your face. So that's it. If you can <laughs> take the high def well off, played. I'll be happy. Well played. <laughs> hey, there's never a dull moment in technology in regards to this, you know, avenue that we've gone on in regards to building this network. It's it's amazing to me. You love technology, but at the same time, it could be so frustrating, Shane, having yeah, this I mean, happen. But just <laughs> comments like in the chat, it's 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 not it's not Phil's equipment. This is a who we the software that we use. It's a known issue with them that we're tr working with them. They're working almost with daily us. on yeah, trying to it's figure it out. To it's, our other friends' shows, everybody using really <laughs> copy what we started to be perfectly everybody's it, there now that's for sure keeping it 100 everyone's using this software called Streamyard, yeah. and we've been talking to the people that actually run it they have um, what do you call it town halls and stuff and so there is a known issue what's up diamond scott with regards to this so if it happens you just have to like go into the backstage and come back on and hopefully it's frustrating because believe me the money that i've put into the equipment and the upgraded internet we've troubleshot everything just keeping it 100 getting that shit out of the way as we talk about this shit i mean i did 43 minutes of the tape never lies for the patron and then 20 something minutes obviously put out tonight and Shane, it's hard to stomach either one of those because of the reality of the offensive line. And tonight, we're going to have a great guest on to talk about it even further in regards to the truth in in this yeah. situation that we got on top of the piss. You want some play. truth bombs? They're going to be coming tonight. Phil and I <laughs> drop a lot of them. This guy's not going to cut any fucking corners. He's going to drop it right on your head. Just ask he's Fred always Miller. In our, he's always in our open. Yeah. He's always laughing in our open. I can't wait till he comes on here. I yeah, mean, Olin is it. the perfect guest for us. You know, we've had Josh Woods on a few times. He he fits the vibe of this show, and Olin is another one. Right, right from Jump Street. They they get it. They're not gonna, you know, pussyfoot around. They're gonna come out swinging, and that's exactly what this franchise needs. Enough with the. The media that won't ask the tough hitting questions we're going to answer it we're going to get everything answered here tonight with a guy that's there with a guy that knows that organization inside and out yeah i'm sorry thunder girl about your brother i see you in the chat throwing that message up there claudio um yeah it's tough i, I you know the chicago bears are kind of your therapy through life you got the presidential election, all the question marks there. You got the Bears, all the question marks there on the offensive line, the quarterback position. People are wanting to see Mitch, as you saw in the open that I produced with Rex Ryan and Orlovsky. And now Mitch is hurt. COVID has attacked the two thirds of our offensive line. It's attacking everywhere, man. I mean, San Francisco, it's, it's definitely expanding. It's 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 unfortunate because now this is a real question for you, Shane. You know, uh, Spriggs is playing, but he's he's got COVID, so now he's blocking the Saints players. They're not going to be COVID. It's, yeah, it's well. I mean, you saw uh, Detroit put Matt Stafford on COVID nineteen list earlier tonight because oh, I didn't he's been see in, that. yeah he's been in close contact. So there's a chance that they may be able to pull him off the uh, COVID list for the game on Sunday. Matt Nagy talked about it today with Jermaine Effetti. It kind of sounds like they're expecting him to be able to play on Sunday where they can pull him off. Mm -hmm. And we'll see if Cody Whitehair is going to, you know, be pushed in his rehab a little bit to see if he can just get out there and, and gut it out because these guys are getting to the bottom of the barrel. But the thing about it is, Phil, where I'm going to put some silver lining into this, Head coach hasn't been the one to make the changes. Injuries have dictated it, and sometimes that's the best thing that needs to happen. You get some of these young guys in there that are hungry, you may be surprised because it can't get much worse. 
it's really... <laughs> I don't know what they're going to do, to be perfectly honest. You saw your GM. He didn't do shit on the offensive line. Yeah. He didn't make one move. No. And listen, I don't know if there was opportunities for him to do anything, but the reality is you have to notice that this team is so poorly coached fundamentally on the offensive line. And to be able to be successful just with anything offensively, your offensive line has to know their assignments. They have to know the front. So the more you chain, now Mustafer's hurt, now who's the center? I'm listening to Nick Foles. Yeah, well, we're, we're, we're sitting with the centers. Who, who's playing center? Who is playing tackle? How are you going to handle this? The coach is well over his head. We've talked about this in regards to Coach Nagy. It just, it bothers me. It bothers me. Is my connection bad again? Yeah, you're, you're lagging out pretty good. Oh, my Lord. It's not a connection thing. Close out everything that you have that's not StreamYard, Phil. That's where I'd start. I did. I closed yeah. everything. I can't figure. Here, Shane, I got a question. You got a question. I think Just he's the... in the wrong podcast. Here. What is? What is this? <laughs> MLS... Has MLS what now? Yeah, it's an MLS question. Has MLS... Has MLS league become more popular than it was ten years ago in the United States? Or... I think yeah, you stumbled into the wrong podcast. Absolutely, I, I cannot say your name. I would if I. We're going to call him Scuba Steve for the sanctity <laughs> of the show. Scuba Steve, this isn't a soccer show. I'm, I'm really sorry. Up, yeah, I'm sorry to disappoint you, bro. <laughs> but I put you up there. I, I kind of answered the question. <laughs> there he is. Well, Phil, well, you I missed it. We got a soccer question. Yeah, this actually is for you. Here, here. I was going to put it oh, for you, but then can you had to not go. put a soccer. I saw it pop up. I'm like, <laughs> it was just a joke. The MLS right. is. Jesus Christ. It seems right. like one of your buddies from the past coming in. <laughs> I I don't know. No, I can't answer the MLS. I, I've never even seen a game on television. Do I look better now? You connection? do. Anyway, like I was saying, there's so many issues in regards to just the team starters. Now you're going into backup issues, center yeah. issues all around issues in regards to this football team and it the quarterback now you got the backup quarterback Mitch Trubisky people were calling for him to possibly replace Nick Foles yeah you see we can we can break some news here Phil for the fans before Olin comes on with us if you want to drop a little breaking news let me drop the breaking news we haven't done this in a while. I know. There's been no news. Breaking news. The tape never lies. Network. Breaking news. So, with Mitch Trubisky expected to miss time, the Bears are bringing quarterbacks Jake Ruddick and Kyle Sloter for a workout per the transaction wire. You know, this is something, Phil, we've been talking about for a long time with this team. For whatever reason, <laughs> they just they have this belief in Tyler Bray. And, I mean, I don't think it was a very good vote of confidence that Matt Nagy gave to Bray today. You know, he's been around for eight years. Well, eight years. <laughs> he's been around for eight years, and he's horrible. Just because he knows the offense, I don't care. You shouldn't be eating up a roster spot. He's not a good quarterback. We've We've seen that. Uh, they need to bring in somebody to get somebody, you know, with some youth, maybe as limited upside as they have. It's still better than than nobody on this team. Sloter is a guy that's been in the division for a little bit. Ruddick, I know, is a guy that they actually had some interest in in the draft, believe it or not. But we know the Bears in drafting quarterbacks. There, there hasn't been a, a Ryan Pace thing he talks about it an awful lot but he never pulls the trigger but um i don't know if you have any you know thoughts on those guys but i think you would agree with me that they do need to bring in somebody to get them at least in the system 
Well, this is another shot at Ryan Pace because he's promised every year we're going to make quarterback a priority and you should take one in every draft. Now you don't have anybody that you've taken to develop and you're sitting there with somebody handpicked by Coach Nagy that has limited experience in the NFL as it is. So yeah, that in above itself sucks. Phil, let's, I see that this is... H.L. Priest made this comment that Mitch is not hurt, and I've seen this on Facebook. I've seen it on Twitter. Yes, Mitch is hurt. Let's put this to bed right now. Mitch Trubisky is a free agent. There's no upside at all for the Chicago Bears to say, oh, we're going to pretend like he's hurt so we don't have to deal with a quarterback debate. Mitch and Mitch's agent would be screaming from the rooftops if that were to happen. He's a free agent. This is his third shoulder injury in three years. If it was fake, they don't. They wouldn't want that news out there with him hitting the free agent market. So it make there. If it's anybody really believes that, I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna ask you. Well, what is the upside for Mitch and his agent if it, this was to be some big conspiracy theory? No, Mitch came in for one play. He's Phil. We've talked, but we talked about this on BHL. Mitch hasn't been as confident and runner as he was earlier on in his career since his two shoulder injuries. He's you can see him thinking, you can see the the wheels spinning on should I go down this way? Should I go down that way? Should I get out of bounds? And he gets caught in between. He went down awkward again versus the Saints. It took one play, and this is the second injury to his throwing shoulder. And it's it's obviously an issue with him. Yeah, no agent is going to allow a conspiracy. Oh. They would pop right in there because they're concerned about the next contract and the next team that's going to want to sign him. So th that, well said by you. I saw you text me that earlier today about yeah, a Just lot of people sense. making that assumption, if you will, that somehow this is some conspiracy that Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace have developed in order to get people from stop well, what you saw, you know, Rex Ryan and Dan Arlovsky talking about, you, you got Lewis Riddick on Monday Night Football speaking out on this. A lot of people, uh, Ryan Clark, obviously he was in that too, talking about changing up your offensive philosophy to meet the talent of your team. So some of that in the open, Shane, real quick before Olin gets here, you know, makes sense. They have some sort of understanding that philosophically your offensive line is terrible. So wouldn't it benefit the Chicago Bears to get someone who's more mobile that can change the philosophy of what you're doing? And, and my answer to that, and I want to see if you agree, would be that I don't think Matt Nagy is a fucking good enough coach no. to do what his players do best. Right. No, I, I I totally agree with your thought process there, Phil, because we've seen it play out in front of us. I mean, he's Matt Nagy is not going to be a guy that's going to fit what he has in personnel and put them in the best positions. Matt Nagy is a guy that wants to force feed a baby with a shovel. You know, he, he wants exactly. his system. He doesn't want to conform the system to the players that he has. He wants what he wants, and that's that's literally one of the worst type of coaches that you can have on a team. You can, it's fine. You can be a leader of men. You can do build a great locker room. You can be perfect with that stuff. Matt Nagy is not a good play caller. He's just not at I this agree. point. I mean, it's <laughs> Phil. You you. You've been on you've been on this earlier than anybody. You know, we've talked about it over and over and over again. Now the masses, the you know, the national media and, and everybody are starting to buy into it and this is something that we've talked about for e years even there we held his feet to the fire filled back in 2018 even when they were playing well when he was coach of the year in the NFL. There was still legitimate questions with Matt Nagy. So it's You can't the, you can't I've said this before on the tape, Never Lies. I've said it on BHL. You can't have a BU culture and then expect everybody to play together. It's like the right. two opposites. It's like a magnet. 
mm. like on opposite ends. It pushes. It makes no sense. Does that even fit? I agree. He's not a good leader of men. He's somebody that can capture lightning in a bottle when things are going well. We've seen those guys before. Mark yeah. Tressman, Dick Durant. I saw this guy for who he was since the beginning. I saw who David Montgomery was since the beginning. Now everybody's changing their narrative. We've always been the same. And the reality is with Nagy, it just can't get worse. And then it does. <laughs> like I'm watching this guy. I mean, if you watch the tape Never Lies today, you looked at that play, <laughs> the, the jet sweep, toss forward to Anthony Miller, Shane, inside yeah. the fucking 12-yard line. Like, what kind of... Like, only person I know that would run that play, possibly, is some fucking lunatic like Mike Martz. Like... Would you, a kid on Madden might run that. Like, this is a head coach running that play after you're driving down the football field. And it's over and over. It's not like that was the first time it's ever happened, Shane. Right. It happens over and over and over. And then finally, you'll run a play that's intricate in football philosophically to the talent of your team where two tight ends running down the seam has yet to happen you got a you finally got a penalty running a tight end through the seam in the red zone for god's sake it's so so frustrating to watch somebody who's so focused on plays and right. not being a head coach that that's why this situation is the way it is i mean I've been around coaches my whole life. It's the best ones that can adapt to the players, fill their philosophy. If you can't adapt your philosophy to the players that you you have, and you only have your philosophy, and that's it, then that ship is gonna sink. It's like I'm only gonna put gas. I'm only going to put this kind of gas. Well, the BMW needs the premium. You can't just keep throwing the shitty gas in there and think it's going to fucking work. It ain't. And that's what this guy continues to do. Like, real quick, I know our guest is in the green room, right, Claudio? Yes, and that's why I'm coming on. It's my cue. Speaking of <laughs> premium, we got premium center Owen Cruz waiting in the wings. But, of course, Phil. We only gotta, do it one way. The right way. I want to say this before I introduce our guest, because this fucking guy is not only one of the best centers I've ever scouted or saw, he, and I'm glad he's hearing this because he deserves it, he is somebody that keeps it real and expects everybody to come and rise to the level of him. So those teams that you saw that might not have been as talented... They rose to the occasion because of one person, and that was this guy that's coming on the show, and nobody deserves this intro more than him. More, the real deal, Holyfield, there he is, the legend, number 57, the captain, Shane, Olin Krutz, welcome to the new house, the tape never <laughs> lies, keeping it 100 with us. Thank you for coming on tonight. What's up, guys, man? You guys, you guys catching me good? I'm cutting in and out sometimes, so. Yeah, we got. Yeah, we can we can hear oh, right you. On. We can right hear on. you. Yeah, we appreciate. Did you, you, did you sign the contract yet to come play center in Nashville this weekend for us? <laughs> <laughs> and the Bears would be in real trouble. Yeah. Well, I don't think it can get think worse, so. man. <laughs> maybe, maybe maybe one or two plays, but after that, I, I need we'll, a sub. <laughs> we'll take it. We'll take it. Listen, we'll just put you on the fucking goal line. That's where we need <laughs> you. Just. Get the Listen, front block. I'll uncoil. I don't know what will happen, but I'll, I'll uncoil <laughs> on that goal line. There'll be no drop sets. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna let it go. If guy moves, I might be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, uh, you, you're the epiphany and the epitome, rather, of the issues that reign on this team. I mean, you are the penicillin, I believe, to the problem here. Let's talk about this offensive line, and let's start right there at the center position. 
last time we talked with you, you were on another network. So I thank you for coming on the new network. And you talked about James Daniels and the potential there. That freaking kid went, looked in the mirror, and came back body beautiful and physically was out there balling until, unfortunately, he got hurt. He was clearly, to me, our best offensive lineman. I know what you said about this football player, but then they kept White here in its center. He gets injured. Now this kid, Mustafer, comes in. He's injured. I don't know what the Bears are going to do at the center position, but talk about the importance of that, especially that position in the Matt Nagy run game philosophy. Yeah, and I'll start with James because I don't know how you guys felt, but I felt he, he was probably their second best football player on their offense, you know, only behind, you say, Allen Robinson. But James was up there, man. I mean, he was competing for being the best ball player on their offense. On an offense that doesn't have a lot of good football players, as you guys well know. Um, So, Cody White here, they kept him at center. I thought that was a mistake. Um, Mm -hmm. I think James would have developed a really good center. I I know a lot of guys who I talk to who watch offensive line play couldn't believe the one-on-one blocks he was making at center. But... Anyway, they stuck with Cody. I thought Cody was really struggling. I thought they looked good against Detroit. I thought they looked pretty good against what's turned out to be a pretty good defense, the Giants, but against yep. very vanilla looks, right? And it looked about midway through the second quarter. Atlanta said, that's enough. We're going to run blitz these guys, throw some run stunts at them. And since then, the Bears have really been struggling with, with these run blitzes and run stunts. Carolina almost exclusively – threw cross stalls at them on first down. I know you guys watched the film, so I know you guys saw that. And they never really recognized it and picked it up. So, so it became a problem of, well, now the center's got to start recognizing stuff out there, man. He's got to direct traffic. He's got to make the calls, put everybody on the right guys, right? And then Sam Mustafer comes in last, last week against the Saints, and they average 4.2 yards a carry. And I don't think that's by accident. Although Sam may, may, ha- may not have the physical skills Cody has, Sam is a very intelligent center. I know him really, really well from my nice. time in Notre Dame with Harry. Uh, been working with Sam and some in the offseason, so I'm a little biased, to be honest. But um, hey. he gets he, he gets his knee nicked up, right? And now, um, you know, I'm, I'm hearing it, it may be Alex Barr is going to try to center, but what, what that tells oh, you is they really don't have a – they really don't have an answer. And that goes all the way back to the way the team was built in the offseason. Yep. And we're not going to go out and, and uh, knowing you guys as, as well as I know you guys. Now, I, I know it's just probably gone over in your podcast too many times. But, um, you, you know, to say that I think what Ryan Pace said was um, Juan Castillo, you guys are underestimating what the signing of Juan Castillo means. And everybody knows that me and Harry Heastan are really good friends. But. I am also really good friends with Donovan Raiola, assistant online coach. So I, I still cheering for the offensive line success, obviously. Right, right. And um, it just didn't make sense to me because the NFL is about players and coaches. And so if you put so little resources into a position that's already pretty bad, now you get any kind of injuries, and now we are where we are, and, and it doesn't look very good. Only we had your former teammate back in the day, Steve Edwards, on – last week with us chopping it up a little bit he was talking about you and everything was good by the way but uh (laughs) then he was lying (laughs) he said everything was good because he was afraid of you yeah he goes yeah we didn't want to mess all it (laughs) he told us a story where you just he's like he smacked him in the head yeah he goes he'd call motherfuckers out and practice right from the start of practice I'm a firm believer in creating chaos. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he was what he was talking about, and we talking about a lot it here a lot. And Phil's been on it for years, even back to when he signed his extension. But number seventy-two, oh. Charles Leno. What when you're seeing him? What is Olin Krutz, who's who's been on the offensive line? What are you seeing when you see Charles Leno? Uh, I, I see a guy who, who's struggling, probably not playing, not probably. He's not playing his best football right now. Um, it seems to me like his stance has changed a little bit. Uh, I don't know uh, why he's messed with that. But but obviously losing James, um, having Rashad Coward next to you, who was a defensive lineman, played right tackle, played right guard, not playing left guard, uh, struggling to pick up games, that doesn't help. 
sometimes I see a guy tr- trying to do too much. I see Charles Leno trying to do too much. Uh, sometimes you got to settle in. I- I've been caught in, in up in that myself where, gosh, I'm the only guy left. I'm, I'm going to make huge blocks. Sometimes you just got to settle down and do your job. And look, Charles Leno is at his best an average left tackle in the NFL. If he's playing very good football for Charles Leno, he's an average left tackle. So any step back from that, now you're talking about a below average left tackle. And that's what we've been getting. And, and look, O-line is, is never a mystery, right? It's fundamentals, it's footwork, it's angles, it's get your hands inside. Don't try to do too much. Just do your job. Um, you know, I was watching your guys break down on uh, Mr. Bisky's run. And, and what he's trying to do there is he, he's trying to do too much. Exactly. Uh, block the down guy. Like, that's, let, you have to trust that Rashad is going to do his job. You trust that he'll do his job. I understand uh, you got a new left guard and Rashad is really struggling there. But if you try to do his job and your job, uh, first of all, first of all, Leno, you're not good enough to do that. There's some guys who right. are. Zach Martin, right. I would say Zach Martin for the Cowboys could maybe do two or three jobs. He's a Hall of Fame right guard, probably a Hall of Fame offensive lineman, amazing football player. That's not Charles Leno. So uh, Juan Castillo needs to go to Leno and say, we just need you to be a solid left tackle for our football team. And that's what will really help us. How, well, I was, I was thought Shane was going to ask you this. So I got two questions. Talk about, Steve talked about you seeing Leno with wearing sleeves. He said that is a huge no-no <laughs> as an offensive lineman. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, right you know, I, I, I believe in the history and the tradition of the Bears. Yep. And, and Big Cat told me that. Big Cat said, uh, we don't wear sleeves. You know, a kid from Hawaii coming up. I went to Seattle first, which isn't as cold as Illinois. But uh, came to Illinois and, and, and wanted to wear sleeves. And Big Cat said, we don't here. So uh, that's tradition. That's history. And I don't know who Leno might have played with. Or I know Kyle Long, them all wore sleeves sometimes, too. So. Um, you know, I try not to get into all that stuff. You would hope that the tradition and the history of the Chicago Bears would pass down, um, yeah. but it hasn't. Now, it, um, if you're asking me if I was in the locker room, if I'd say something, I 100% would. That would be 100%. Yep. I would That's... say something about the fact that we don't. And, and furthermore, what people don't understand about football is, and I always tell people this, who say, man, I can't believe you didn't wear sleeves. And I say, it's your core and it's your hands. It's nothing to do with your arms. Exactly. You're not going to be cold anyway. So yep. all you got to really do is, you know, wear the sleeveless warm shirt, uh, wear the gloves, wear whatever you got to wear. But uh, uh, the sleeves don't help you anyway. So uh, to me, it was just a tradition. It, it was just um, all you have to do is tell me once. And Big Cat told me once that we don't wear sleeves and uh, guys didn't wear sleeves back in the day. So we just didn't do it. Well, you are hitting a point of tradition and I feel, just to speak on it for real quick, then I want to ask you this question, but you are the epitome of tradition and understanding the importance of it. That's really something when you watch the tape. I mean, offensively, you guys didn't have the greatest skill players. You didn't have the greatest quarterbacks ever, but you certainly had an attitude. So when you look at this football team, and I know you, so I want you to keep it fucking... Keep it a buck. Keep it a hundred on keeping it a hundred. If you saw your teammates loafing on rundowns or pass protection, whatever it was, is it your responsibility in your mind to call it out? Or is it your position coach? Is it the head coach's responsibility? Give me, give me, give me your truth here. As you guys know, uh, uh, from being around football, coaching football, playing football, it's everybody. It's a culture, right? It's a culture that's created, uh, starts yep. with the head coach, passes down to the assistant coaches, uh, and then it's the leaders on the team, and then everybody's got to be pushing that this is how we are, this is what we do. And I've said many times this year that this offense needed to get in a room and decide and be honest with themselves and say, look, we are not very talented. And, and I've said this before, you go through their starters, one three eleven, and just give them a yes or no. You're going to get a lot of no's, a lot of like, eh, you could probably do better at that position right there. So what do you have, right? You have effort. You have details. You have uh, – I'm just going to give every play 100%. I'm going to play right on the edge now, not on the Javon Wims edge, but right on the edge of, of physicality. <laughs> right? I, I, I'm going to play right there. I'm going to play right on that edge. But, you know, a lot of that starts with, you know, even with a run – I'm going to be a running football team and, 
And one of the problems I have is, well, we, we want to run the ball, we want to run the ball. Well, okay, now uh, when you when you sign Jimmy Graham as your starting tight end, then I, I don't really care what words you're using. You're telling me you're not trying to run the ball, okay? Uh, if you if you suit <laughs> yeah. up Ryan Nall and Cor, uh, Cordell Patterson, I don't care what you say about running the ball. You're not trying to run the ball. If you line up on the first play of the third quarter against the Carolina Panthers and you're in I formation and Ryan Nall is your fullback and he's lead blocking, well, you're lying to me about this whole run the ball and we want to be physical and we want to hit guys because those – not that those guys are bad football players, but those guys don't scream to me, we want to run the ball, right? On first and second down, I want to see Cole Komet out there. If you're serious about being a dual threat, run the ball and pass, and pass the ball. So um, the players, I think – are just as responsible, but it needs to be pushed from all levels of a football team that this is who we are, this is our personality, this is our attitude. And if all you're worried about is scheming pass routes, well, then that's going to come out as, as what kind of football team you are. And this is who we are. And, you know, you know, I know it's this is what, what we what where we are nowadays. But uh, you know, there's all this club dub, and if you're winning, do it right. Do all that club dub. Do all that stuff. But but you, there's got to be a little bit of toughness, a little bit of effort on your football team, especially if you lack talent. Only one of the things that we've talked about here, and I know you you cover it every single week, and you hear offensive genius with Matt Nagy and all this bullshit. In after 40 games that he's been here as the head coach, you know, regular season games, what offensive players have improved under Matt Nagy's watch? Yeah, you, you would say only Allen Robinson was playing pretty good football and James Daniels was, was, that was, was on the, his way. That, that was we talked one. about it here on the show and we came up we we said that Allen was good before he got here because he's had you know had the big season, but James Daniels was the one guy on the list that we came up with. And after that, you're you're three you're in year three. And the right. and we're talking about two guys now. That's right. a big and, time issue. It is, the, the issue with the offense is really no secret, right? Like if we yeah. go back and we say, okay, uh, I'm going to look through the, the – why are the Bears been so bad? Well, let's look at the drafts from 19 – I don't know, 97, 98, 90, just go all the way back and you'll, you'll figure out why, first of all, the Bears haven't been good. And I just think that um, there's not really a lot of honesty – in, throughout the offensive side of the ball, of, okay, right. this is who we are. This is what we need to be to succeed. Uh, you know, what are the formula when you look through the NFL and the history of the NFL, when you have a defense like the Bears have, the formula is to try to control the, the ball, run the ball downhill, punt away when you have to, and don't turn the ball over. Well, the Bears are, I think, minus one going to this weekend. They're not going to win games. Uh, <laughs> they're minus one. They have to be around plus six or plus seven to be – in this playoff hunt, I would imagine. Uh, but the defense is pretty good. And look, the opportunities are there, right? Rofe Juan Smith uh, in overtime, yeah. Eddie Jackson in overtime, Khalil oh. Max, two sack fumbles now, back to back weeks. We don't pick up either one. Hey, Sean Gibson, right before the half against the Rams, swats it down instead of catches the ball. Uh, oh. You guys have seen all of this. So uh, that's the kind of thing the Bears, I, I would imagine, have to be. So, like, you know, one of the sacks in overtime was second and six or four, I think. And uh, all of a sudden, we're running a seven or eight step drop, and everybody's running deep. Allen Robinson is coming over, I guess, on a 12 yard, 12 yard over route, which I guess, you know, um, um, Foles could have got out. But look, when you got Spriggs at right tackle and a Fetty at right guard, uh, there's going to be uh, protection problems. And if you tell me with that offense line, you tried it out there on Sunday afternoon that. They're going to throw the ball 40 times. I'm guessing five to six sacks. That's my first guess. Jeez. Let me ask you this about the coach. You just drummed it up in my head. You know, you've been in there. You've been played with Mike Martz and all of these offensive coordinators you've had an experience with. So with this guy, I've never seen it in my life. It's so pathetic, to be honest, as a football coach, as a, as a coach's son. Just watching this, it gets me so frustrated by the the coach's decision to not help these tackles and just continue to go empties and four wides and no help for the quarterback or anybody at, at as as a player did you ever have to go to the offensive coordinator or the head coach we we can't do that i can't right. do we can't do 
Have you ever had that? Because right now, what we have a bunch of puppies out there getting destroyed on Sundays in in what you said with a defense that's championship quality, mm-hmm. championship quality. And 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 where are the screens? Right, like everything. <laughs> they I mean, can't even run got, one. Well, they I they I did that one. They tried to run the first drive, but they picked it up. Was a fumble. I mean, anyway, their execution on screens are, are horrible. I would if if I'm the Chicago Bears. That may be the biggest part of my practice right now. It's because of the offensive line I got. Are are you like you're talking about help protection? So everybody knows what they're doing. Uh, Spriggs was like he was trying to help too much on that one sack. I think yeah. it was Demario Davis, and he just let him go free. Uh, Demario Davis paused a little bit, and then that screen they tried to run to, um, Montgomery. It you know it didn't fool anybody. So it, that would be a big because that's what our offense needs, right? We need that kind of those kind of plays to take pressure off our offensive line. That's not very good. The one team that this team, I'm hoping, kind of reminds me of is 2010. It was my 13th season. Uh, we went to the NFC Championship game. We were horrible on offense uh, in the beginning of the year. I think against the Seahawks, we gave up something like eight or nine sacks, seven or six in the first half. Uh, it's because we had a ton of confusion on on blitz pickup, on third down, on our nickel protection. We called it arc. That was our match protection out of nickel. And Mike Tyson and Mike March were arguing about uh, uh, what the exact rules were. So everybody was confused, right? But but we got a little a better and better as the year went on. And we understood that we weren't very good, right? I think it was uh, Jamarcus Webb was at either right tackle and Frank Omeo. Taco was, Tuesday. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it was. <laughs> listen, I, I used to line up and just say, man, we had Greg Olsen as a tight end who is a very good block. tight end, but he's not a blocker to anybody. So. Um, but, you know, the one difference between that team, even as this team, is that we did have Matt Forte, we did have Devin Hester, we did have Johnny Knopf. So we had some explosive players who could get down the field. This team, Mooney's kind of coming along. He's a fun I kid like to him. watch play football, really fun. Uh, him yeah. and Cole Komet and Montgomery give you a little bit of hope if everybody yeah. can keep getting just better and better. And that's what this offense needs to do, man. They, they, you have to almost accept what you are, right? It's like being a street fight. Like, if a guy is better than you and standing up, well, tackle his ass, right? Put him on the ground. You know, <laughs> exactly. If the guy starts bobbing and weaving and moving his head and he makes you miss three punches, this is not the guy to stand up with, right? So uh, <laughs> the, the, the Bears have to accept to me what they are. They're not an overly talented group, so they have to give effort. They have to demand almost perfection out of each other. I mean, we can't get delayed games. Ryan Nall cannot – with his – it's a great example. With Ryan Nall's talent, Ryan Nall, you have to know how to line up. You just do. Like, if you don't know how to line up, then I have to oh. replace you on game day, okay? Uh, Jimmy Graham, we can't have false starts. I mean, uh, you're not coming off the ball hard anyways, so there's no need to have a false start out of you. This offense can't put this up in a chains. Uh, whims, we can't have a two-piece out of nowhere. Oof, uh, we can't oh have to, you know, we got to get into that. But, yeah. you know, and, but credit to this offense, when you watch them, you're like, man, all of a sudden, you don't even know how it's 23-23, but it is, right? And they scored 13 points, I think, in the first quarter. They go right down the field, uh, score a touchdown, kick a field goal, tie the game up. And it's just it's so hot and cold. But yeah, you see exactly. that, that sometimes when you watch them, you're like, there it is. Like, like take those drives, and this is who you have to be. Oh, and do you think the, the lack of aggressiveness by Pagano, you talked about right before half, that touchdown. I mean, they Drew Brees threw the first one. It should have been a touchdown. He threw behind the guy, and then they went right to the other side of the field. Essentially, the same play. But Pagano had his had Johnson. He wasn't even in the fucking frame of where the guy caught the <laughs> caught the cool. football on the TV feed. But do you think that the 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 passive approach is all because of the offense, where he knows that he just can't get beat? over the top for a quick strike. Do you think that where that's coming from? Because when he when Chuck first got here, it was always, you know, we're going to get our guys going this way. We're going to be attack, attack, attack. And we're we're just not seeing that. Yeah, and I, that's, I think what you said is exactly what it is. And I think Dave Wansett has said that. And Dave Wansett knows Pagano pretty well. So, uh, yep. so I'm thinking that that, that has been right. said to him, that we cannot give – you know, we just know that if we give up points, we just got to play a bend but don't break style – we fall behind 14-0, we've probably lost the game. So I think it has a lot to do with it. Now, with that being said, there has been communication breakdowns and coverages. You can see it. Uh, that looked like some sort of cover three. And then, you know, yeah. the, the linebacker yeah. didn't get depth. 
and the safety left, and Jalen Johnson looks like he has to squeeze the, the receiver on that play, and he didn't. He didn't squeeze Cook. And the crazy thing is, I think they ran it on the other side, the play yeah, before. They, yeah, they did, and it drew, yeah. breeze through behind them, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, so, and, and there's been a couple coverage breakdowns you've been watching. And Tayshawn Gibson, who I thought had, had an excellent start to his year, uh, oh, the yeah. last two games, uh, there's been some communication problems, uh, especially in that secondary. So uh, hope, hoping they get back to the level because – like well, you guys know, guys, they're going to have to play at a very high level for these Bears to go where we all like to see them in the playoffs and maybe still a win once everything starts all over again. So uh, takeaways and this defense, I thought the secondary, honestly, in the first four or five games was the strength of their team, especially in that red zone. They were, yeah. I mean, they were lights out, man. There was nobody open in that red zone. So uh, hopefully they get back to that. I can't have them start going the other way right now midseason because – that would not be good for the Bears if, if teams start putting it in the end zone uh, when they get down there in the red zone because the offense has a hard time catching up. And the, the thing with the Bears is, like you guys know, it seems like the last two teams have put on film what they struggle with, and now they're going to keep seeing that when they hit the red zone. Absolutely. Listen, you were known as somebody <clears throat> that not only was a leader of men and Fans loved you. You were the captain. So let's talk about the secret spit and the two piece. You know, everyone jokes about you, you know, taking it to uh, Fred Miller, but that was off the field. This situation, obviously, the guy pulled his mouth guard out. I didn't, the NFL didn't put it on the All 22, they deleted it off. So I, want, I was looking forward to seeing it. But they didn't put it out there because I wanted to see what transpired. Uh, Javon apparently said that he was spit, but I'm hearing that that's bullshit. That the dude did pull out his. Someone's done that shit to me. Yeah, you see that he walks. He did. He did he grab walked, it. He, he grabbed, grabbed his, it and ripped it off. But I didn't see. So I mean, if a dude spits on you, you're gonna. There's gonna be some. You're gonna be immediate yeah. reaction to a spit. Right. That that's a whole. Listen, as a, anyway, I don't want to get into my story, but. Your story, this is a team game. For me, I spoke on it. A lot of people are, you know, about 70% totally agree with me. There's no place for that. You take that shit out between the hashes when between the whistles. And that's where I was coming from. You're the captain, though. Speak on what you saw and what you thought of that whole piece. And then talk about Coach Nagy's handling of it yeah you know from a guy who obviously had my own my own issues uh, uh both issues i had you know i had one in college too where i got suspended but both are off the field um you know when you're on the field you, you're trying not to hurt your team i was thrown out of one game against the washington redskins i think it was like 2000 2000 or something blake brockmeyer you guys remember his name yeah, oh, yeah. He, left from texas he yeah, he cut a D lineman and knocked himself out. So the D line for the Redskins was beating him up. So I jumped in uh, while Blake was getting knocked out. He was getting punched. But that was a whole nother NFL, right? You remember that NFL, guys? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Plays and, um, so <laughs> yeah. The, the thing that confuses me when I watch the film of Javon Williams was I think a couple plays before, 22 is lined up right over him. And it's mm -hmm. a run play. And if you had a problem with that guy, I, I, would, I would think that at that time you're trying to take his head off. I mean – uh, you, it, but but he barely even touched him on that play. So that's what really confuses me was uh, you had a shot right there, and I don't know if that's when all everything happened was just the drive before. But um, you know, there, there, there's also the argument that look, uh, this guy has been punched by like two or three different guys, and yeah. and has had a bunch of problems. So maybe this guy does need a punch in the face. But I would tell Javon Wims that that if you really want to fight somebody, it's kind of like right. starting a fight in class. It's school right if you start it in class the teacher's just gonna break it up so why don't you go in the parking lot he's got to come out of the locker room at some point if you got that much of a problem with this guy uh, uh exactly. you know, just, just take it to the parking lot that was the old nfl you know everything was meet you in the parking lot so uh that's kind of the school i come from and i don't i just can't imagine uh, uh punching a guy when you know the refs are all gonna break it up you're not gonna make a point anyway at that at that point so um you know and then Coach Nagy, the only problem I had with what Coach Nagy said was, I think at that at that time, 
I, I, you know, at least say you saw it because we all know you saw it. Exactly. exactly. We talked about oh, that yeah. live. Yeah. We went yeah, on the air live. Like, what the? F Come on, bro. Yeah. You're at just least lying you again. And and then a, a good thing to me, like I think he, I'll be honest with you, and, and he, yeah. probably he probably would have took some flack there, but I think I thought that he missed an opportunity to to kind of say, look, I got, we all got each other's back here. Like, you yeah. know, he would have been completely wrong outside of the building. He would have been wrong, but that offense needed something to bring them together. And, yep. and if he asked me the way he handled it, it kind of like, I don't know if Javon Wims will ever gain his trust back again, because, uh, you know, the, the, these, it's just like, man, my coach just said, just sold me down. Like he knows what 22 is like all game. And, and the guy got in my head, but at least he saw it. Uh, it's not good for the team. And we'll handle that thing behind closed doors or something like that. But it just seems like it was more, I'm going to tell everybody what they want to hear and totally deny seeing the situation. And to me, it just wasn't a good way to handle it. Yeah, if you remember last year when the Bears played the Saints in Soldier Field, you remember when Tariq had his little run in. So with the same guy, remember when they're putting their hand yeah, up over Alan, top of his head? Allen Robinson tried to fight him after the game. Yeah, yep, yeah, they so, did. Yeah, and it, as, soon as, as soon as Javon did that, Tariq Cohen sent out a tweet. He's like, ah, oh, telling all the fans to be quiet, you know, complaining about Javon. He's like, no, he gets it. He knows. He knows. He knows. And I'm like, and you know, you know yeah. so, sometimes it's wrong. Even though that seems wrong and stupid to say, yeah. sometimes like that offense needs any something. Yeah, anything, something. Yeah, yeah something. I get that. Some yeah. semblance like, of toughness. Like, and, and, and like you guys know, like, you know, just like I got your back, even when you're wrong, you know, like, like family, like, you know, I, I don't yep. know. I don't know what just happened there. Uh, why did you get me in that fight? But I'm gonna be in that fight with you. You know what I mean? Like uh, we all we all have that cousin, right? Where you're like, there, oh yeah, that idiot, there that idiot goes again. And, and, but you're gonna get, but you're gonna get his back, right? You're, and then, I just bailed gonna, mine out three months ago. You're gonna be mad at him yeah. later, right? You're gonna be yeah, mad at him exactly. Later. Behind closed doors, you'd be like, hey, stupid, don't do that again. But yeah, and, and out in front of everybody, I thought they all they all kind of missed an opportunity to be like, uh, you know, 22 is a moron. Uh, you know, yeah. he deserved that. Even though you might have been wrong, even though that's started the wrong thing to say, at some point, hopefully something can bring you guys together. Let me just say real quick, the thing I had a big issue with, Owen, is you're a stand-up dude. You're right in the motherfucker's face right there. This dude comes off the sideline, sucker punches him, and then does, grabs his thing, sucker and it's like, what the? Well, if you want, set up, I let's go. Bring, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to break down the fight. There's a receiver in a DB, but um, the, the, the jab and jump back kind of had me baffled, right? Come on, yeah. bro. That's what I'm talking about. The jab, and then he, like, Keep it 100. Feet. I mean, just I mean, if you're going to stand in there, just stand in there and let it go already. Exactly. You know? Come hell, you like... might win, you might lose, but just let your hands go. And see well, Gardner's, you know. Gardner's reaction was just, he, he didn't even <laughs> fuck it. He's like, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> that was the best it part. Looks so, it looks so... <laughs> Dumb, and then the penalty. At least throw penalty. an uppercut. Yeah, right, <laughs> right, yeah. An uppercut and a left hook to the liver would work, but whatever. <laughs> yeah. you know, Straight I, to the just, face mask. It just seems like at that age in your football career, you should have a little better plan. I mean, I punch guys in the face mask. I, I told guys, I said, if you've been ever fighting on a football field and got them really mad, you're not thinking about the face mask. You just exactly. say, go. But uh, I don't know. It That's like a that PFF kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, I think it was kind of planned out. I, I don't know. But I, I wasn't shocked. It was a receiver and a DB. And uh, my grandfather used to say, uh, let those two guys fight. They can't hurt each other anyway. So uh, <laughs> I, I, that, that would be my, pillow be my fight. theory on those two guys. Yeah. Like, let them fight. <laughs> you know what they're actually doing? They're actually, they want you to break it up. Because yeah, gonna, right, right. right, right. right. So right. they're looking for right. someone to break it up. So I just let them go and laugh. I, if we're, I've got a D lineman. Let them go. Don't jump in. You know, no one's going to get hurt here today. So, Olin, if we jump back to the, when James Torres Peck and they, they bring in Alex Bars at left guard to cover yeah, for him, please struggled on the first couple of snaps, but I, I didn't have any issue with the way that he played the rest of the game. I knew it was going to be a little bit of a struggle, but then they pull the okie doke and then he's gone from left guard. They put Coward over there and he's, I don't know if he's got a. Phil's been on it too with him. He, Phil thinks he's more of a tackle anyway, and that's where he should be. Howard, but. right tackle. Mm -hmm. He doesn't yeah. have to think, Olin. Right. He's got one. That's your guy. That's who I'm going to block. He's a fucking bully. But, you know, he's a bouncer. He, to he's what I was. Talent. 
to what I was saying, though, when yeah, the politics and here. initially Bars was the backup at left guard and was good enough it's, to be the backup to left guard. You gave him a couple of quarters, and then he's gone from there, and it's and and Coward is in. You're talking about your relationship with Mustafer. Do you have him with Bars? Yes, also, I do. As well? I, I have a relationship with Bars also. Um, look, I, it was interesting because remember when Spriggs went down for a little bit? Yeah, I yeah. Thought, I, thought, put, I thought that there was the best line on the field when Coward went to right tackle and yeah. Bars came in left guard. I, I, yeah. I, I, I thought they should have stuff with that. Look, I, I told Alex this, so I'm not saying anything I haven't told him. I said, when you came in, um, those first three or four or five plays, you, you, you lost, you lost, you gave Coward a chance. Like you got to come in and you got to execute immediately. Uh, you you have to have fun. You've been fundamentally correct. We talked about this with everybody else. You got to look like you're doing some kind of offensive line technique. And you know, Alex was a little all over the place his first start. I, I'm with you. Uh, his first chess game played. I'm with you. I would have stuck with Alex. I thought yeah. he would. I thought he would have vastly improved the next game. Uh, I try to stay away from critiquing those guys too much. Uh, any of those Notre Dame guys, I know them extremely well from when they were yep. young. I still see them in the off season. We train together a lot, so I try to say critique him too much. But I did tell Alex that, and I told him like you, you gave Coward a chance. But that being said, if I just watched the film, um, as he gave Coward a chance, you imagine Coward is giving Alex his chance back by now. Absolutely, oh, yeah. he couldn't even pick up a simple kindergarten fucking stunt on right. that pass. I mean, it's sad. I'm talking about Coward and Leno. Yeah. Yeah, they, it's, it's, it looked like there was two uh, two twos, and they thought it was a TT, but it wasn't, and the set was bad. And he just oh and, and, and and you know, in his defense, he lost footwork that he probably doesn't have in muscle memory, right? Because here's a guy again we talked about. He's a D lineman, played right tackle, right guard. So now he's got a power left. step, and I don't want to get too into this because you kind of bore listeners. But he's no, got a power step and a, and a kick step back out. Well, he's probably never. I don't know. He's probably done that maybe 15 times in his life. And now it's live with Davenport. And, and you know, I think it was, I don't know who else, who was the D tackle, but uh, th that that even though is simple, if you haven't done it a lot, well, then you don't have it in your memory bank. And when it's full speed, you're going to swing the gate and you'll be sideways. And then the rest is history and it's a sack. I've never seen so much fundamental problems. I'm talking about in the last time me and you talked you talked about Nagy's philosophy in the run game where they're turning shoulders. And listen, let's just keep it 100 here. Here he stand became the fucking scapegoat for Nagy. Then you bring in your boy, Juan Castillo. You champion him out in the public and the same issues are happening. Then you switch fucking Mitch Trubisky. You get, oh, he's, he's, he won the comp. Now he's out. Now I'm going to go with the veteran. And he's doing the same shit Mitch did that you took Mitch out. At what point is it Matt Nagy? And at what point do you give Bill Lazor the play calling duties if you were the GM? Yeah, I, I think I think we're at the point that it's it's Ryan Pace and Matt Nagy right now. The offense, if you look at the offense's problems, uh, that's who it is. That, that's it's those two guys. Uh, you know, they fire Heffrick, they fire Heastand, they fire Wisenhunt. Uh, obviously, you know, it was kind of sold through their press conference that uh, it was because of the run game and things just were not working. And my continuous argument to that is even when they're running the ball well, they don't score points. So you can go through the history of Coach Nagy being here. And most times when they run the ball for 150-plus yards, they score less than 20 points. So yeah. their problem is scoring points, uh, putting points on the board. They don't have explosive players. They couldn't find a way to use Tariq Cohen even when he was healthy. Uh, you know, losing him really hurt them. Uh, ex this is another explosive player to put out there with Allen Robinson, and not Mooney uh, coming around. But, uh, yeah, it's just like we talked about earlier. Look, um, you can't talk about the running game. You can't talk about being physical and then make the signings you made and, and, then, put the, and then dress the guys that you dress on Sunday and look me in the face and tell me you want to be a physical run team. I totally agree. <sighs> It's sad. And, and really, this is a problem that I want you to address. David Montgomery, to me, is like a miracle worker. I said it. You saw <laughs> me break it down the tape. I'm, I'm thinking my days back at Hofstra, coming back from Connecticut and hustling to get the Long Island Railroad through the subway. And I got a fucking 
bag and I'm I'm going this way, this way, everyone's in the way, and I'm fucking just making it there. That's what his life is like. And then you got PFF, National there. This kid sucks. Let's get anybody in there. And nobody except you, this network, is breaking this shit down truthfully of how good this kid is without this line. Imagine with some Fuck it. Big Cat, Olin, Ruben Brown, Bl- Todd Berger. Remember Todd Perry, fucking Kentucky boy? Oh, Those Perry motherfuckers. Todd, Todd Perry shook my hand. It felt like seven bricks were around him. <laughs> I'm like, this, <laughs> you are the, animal. oh my God. He was yeah. one of the most, I remember him taking John Randall and just making him like, like nothing. And John Randall's a Hall of Famer and Todd Perry would just eliminate that dude. That's how good he was, but, you know, injuries and stuff like that. But David Montgomery, Olin, who better to talk about? Give the real fan. That's what we got here on the Tape Never Lies Network. We go by the tape. We fucking hate PFF. We hate all these nerd blog boys that talk their shit. At the end of the day, it's about talent, aggressiveness, fundamentals, blocking and tackling. Who better than you to talk about it? Yeah, Montgomery, he's impressive, man. He fights hard when he gets the ball. Uh, he's not going to go down from the first tackler. Uh, there's been times, obviously, that you can find a guy missing a hole uh, on every film you watch. You watch the best running backs in the league. They're exactly. About to see the Titans this week who have, you know, that guy's an animal. So uh, he misses holes. Uh, but, he, you know, Montgomery is, is, to me, like, he's like the rest of the offense, where even though he's he's very good, like when he broke away last week, we got to put that ball in the end zone, man. When he's someone yeah. to put that ball in the zone, we, we got to get. But he's not that kind of runner. I I fully understand that. Uh, but it's just it just to me that's just when I look at that offense, uh, he's just another guy. When I say man, like another guy we 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 drafted and signed. Like would I like David Montgomery on my team? Yes, I think he's tough. I think he fights for yards. I think he'd be a great number two back. Now, to be honest with you guys, like you're saying, you would have to see him with a better offensive line to make that final decision on him, obviously. But uh, I just think with what this offense is missing, I think it's too bad that they went, even though Montgomery's a good back, they went and got a back who doesn't have breakaway speed. Right. right. So right. They need Especially a guy for who, Nagy's system. For Nagy's system. Yes, they got themselves a, a power workhorse back, which Coach Nagy, like. He, we, tra- he traded one out of town. He know, traded like, one out of town. He traded oh. one to get another one. Like, you know, me and me and Alex Bars, uh, I mean, Alex Bars, Alex Brown and yeah. Ma- uh, Lance Briggs, and they tease me because, you know, I'll scream when um, when uh, Montgomery gets four or five yards. I'm like, do it again. And yeah. Alex is behind me like, you know he's coming off the field. Yeah. And, they, and sure why? Enough, they, they started the game oh. with a run the other day, and then he pulled them out on second down and Dude, ran up with Cordero. I can't. I, they, they did it in this overtime, too. They did yeah. It like, and then they ran that same play action. They ran for 50 yards, <laughs> but no one was buying it because it was Cordero Patterson on the right. field. Right. Exactly. And, and it's just so, like like we're saying here, like I'm sure Montgomery would be a good back in a, in a system that wants to, you know, time a possession. We're going to pound the clock. Uh, you know, maybe a, like a Rams, right? Where the Rams run all those. Oh my God! People out of the backfield and and those kind of things. But for me, in this offense, David, like that, that to me, that's the problem with this offense. You went and got a guy, you finally break away, and he gets tackled, and we get a field goal. So, so to me, that that's the if you had any problem with Montgomery, that'd be it. But your problem would not be effort. Your problem would not be how hard he runs the ball. You probably not. I think I think he leads the the NFL in broken tackles, which is very important. Yep. He Very does. important with that offensive line. So uh, you're going to have to break he's a few adapting. tackles right now. And, 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 you know, this week, I don't even know if the linemen know what their, each other's names are and who they're lining up and, and all those. <laughs> so, you know, they have to bring guys in. So uh, it could be another rough week for them. And, and you know, of course, you put, a, you put a, a line that struggles blocking out there and then you put Jimmy Graham next to them. And now I'm just, oh. now I'm just baffled at what the hell we're trying to do. Oh, my God. Corderell Patterson – coming in when you've gotten five yards or seven yards or 11 yards talk real quick sorry shane if i cut your question off but i i think it's important that the common fan the person that's 
you know, thinking, oh, well, Matt Nagy's record is this. So why are you guys yelling at this guy? Why are... Talk about how important rhythm is for an offense in regards to Matt Nagy not understanding personnel and how to get them there. It's, it's extremely important when you don't have, and I'll go back to it again and again, when you don't have explosive players. You mm-hmm. have to have a rhythm on your offense because you're just not going to have a guy who's going to break one for you. You know, you don't have a Tariq Hill. Uh, you don't have a Kelsey. You don't have Mahomes. Uh, I've, gone, I've gone through this over and over again. I've said this many times. Uh, Bosa, Fisher in a, in a Super Bowl, he still had to block Bosa. Okay, so you need those kind. You need like you need that quarterback, right? If you're going to run this system, as good as that they say that that uh, Kansas City offensive line did and was, they got mauled in the Super Bowl and still won the Super Bowl. Why? They have those kind of players around them, exactly. And that's the system we're running here, and and we don't have those kind of guys. Even Allen Robinson, if he catches it. Uh, he's not going to catch an eight-yard sign and go to the house. He'll get – someone's going to run him down. Uh, they exactly. got one kid – uh, you know, if I had to argue anything, it would be Mooney. I think Mooney has a chance to hopefully be that guy. Uh, he's not overly big. And, again, there's another – there's another thing where you put him, your best weapons on the field, Robinson, Miller, Mooney. Well, now, you, again, you have no run blockers. So you got to put Javon Wims out there when you want to run the ball. And now the whole world knows you're running the ball. You put Javon mm-hmm. Wins and J.P. Holtz on the field, and you're at about 93% run, right? So uh, rhythm for this offense, they can't get behind the chains. Uh, why wouldn't you stay with Montgomery? Get yourself in 30 short, 32, 33, make it manageable. Let them just shove it up in there. And I know sometimes they lose yards, but look, with this offense, if you lose yards in Montgomery, punt the damn ball away with your defense. Punt away exactly. and lift the fight another day. Oh, my God. I love this dude. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Shay. Yeah, you well, that was, you essentially took my took my question there. What you oh, what you're talking about? I don't but want um, to D on whatever. Her no, but you know, Olin, you're talking about what you guys were just talking about. That was something that I've noticed even back when you guys played. We had Thomas Jones on with the place that we where Phil and I came for the net, other network. When we were talking to him. I can remember, like even in the Super Bowl, even in leading up to the Super Bowl year. It seemed like that third series, the starting running back came out and the backup running back came in and Thomas was like, he he bounced that big run in the Super Bowl and he's like, I ran to the fucking sideline. I'm like, you gotta leave me in. I'm gonna I'm gonna go for fucking two hundred. I, I I'm ready. I'm ready. And Lovey's like, no man, no. Said get in. It's this is your series. And you know, you, a lot of football is you gotta go on fucking feel. And that's what we're seeing here with Matt Nagy with. With Patterson, I mean, how is how is Cordero Patterson our number two running back right now? Yeah, That's yeah. I mean, it, it, I really have that. They they drafted Kareth White, and they they obviously liked Ryan Null more than they like Kareth White. Kareth White's had a couple nice runs in Pittsburgh and <laughs> stuff like that. But I just oh god, it drives me. They got, they it drives got me Lamar crazy. Lamar Miller on the practice squad. They yeah. got the kid Pierce. On the practice well, well, squad. And they're protecting Tyler Bray. Don't forget that. They're yeah, exactly. Because he's been with me for eight years. Yeah, that's what Nagy said today. They said, what is he really? He's like, well, he's been with me for eight years. <laughs> he knows I the know offense. I think well, I know. Hopefully he can teach you about the fucking offense, Nagy. <laughs> exactly. Jeez. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Oh my God! Who is is always the question, right? but um, look, e- even with that example, when you think about it, like if you go back to that team, if you if you take Thomas Jones out, Eddie yeah. Cedric Benson's coming in, Adrian Peterson's coming in after Cedric Benson. Like those are three pretty damn good yes. running backs for a power running team, right? And um, do I agree with taking T. Jones out in that Super Bowl? No, but. But Cedric, Cedric was – he was very important to our Super Bowl run. He was a power back. Yeah. He ran downhill. He wore defenses out. If you go back and look at the number Carrie said had, he didn't have a lot of yards, but he was the, he was the guy pounding it up in there. And then, you know, make you guys come downhill, and Thomas was bouncing outside. So it, what I'm saying is is a perfect complement to each other, right? Right. Uh, yep. Cordell Patterson doesn't compliment David Montgomery no. at all. Uh, Ryan Nall doesn't compliment either of them. So, and, and, you know, my problem with a guy like Cordero Patterson, and I think it was the Rams game might have been, or was it last against the Saints, they threw him a quick pass, 
and he and he he made some miss. He went down and he stepped out of bounds. Cordero, we need those three yards on this offense. Yeah, like we you need, need every. You got yeah, we need every yard. We we, we cannot. Uh, they, so just like the offensive line needs to play with a little bit more of an edge, every the skill position too. Like they have to demand it out of each other to get better. That we're gonna play with an edge. We're gonna fight for every yard. We're not going to dip out of bounds when it looks like there's two or three yards there because with this offense, two or three yards totally means agree. a lot. Totally agree. It's Phil, one thing that I, I want to ask Olin before I forget is this is another thing we talked to Steve about. Before the season started, I was listening to an interview with Matt Nagy, and they were asking about some things, you know, different approaches that he was going to take, you know, from 2019 to 2020. And I couldn't believe what I was fucking hearing, but Matt Nagy goes – yeah, I had some guys come to me in the exit oh, meetings. Yes, please and, talk, talk. And he goes, me. I had a couple of players come up to me and say, "Hey, coach, you know, we've been talking to some of the guys, and something that we'd really like to see you do more is to uh, hold us accountable in meetings after games in front of everybody." They were talking about putting the tape up, putting the tape up, and holding of- guys in kind of like holding. Yeah. Let's go holding players with accountable. Yeah, with the whole and fucking team, and I'm like, done that before. So I picked up the coach. phone. I'm like, he calls me. I'm like, Phil, this mother, they're not go, fucking doing this. I go, no way. Did <laughs> There's no that. way. And I'm like, I'm gonna send you the audio. So I sent the audio, and then Matt Nagy goes, we're even gonna include the coaches in it. And I'm like, oh my god, this is this, this is, is where we're at. I they're not the doing this every game. Well, it's not shocking, right? When you like. <laughs> You, you fire the guys you fired on the offensive staff, <laughs> yeah. right? So, so eventually players recognize what's going on. And, and you, you know, with – I think I heard uh, Lombardi say this week, you know, with coaching, you're either coaching it or you're allowing it. It's, it's one of the two, right? Yeah, so, that's a great um, line. Look at if – you, if you think about, like, I'm going to fire Harry Heaston, I'm going to fire Heffert, I'm going to fire um, Wisenheim, but I'm going to keep Dave Ragon. So this stuff just doesn't – eventually it doesn't make sense, right? Okay, right. now – the quarterback hasn't developed. The guy who was here with him the whole time is not a pass game coordinator. So, you know, eventually people start to wonder if you're not going to hold. And I don't mind you firing those three guys. That's just coaching. That's the way coaching goes. But then you have to, if you're going to hold people accountable, you can't leave any cracks as a head coach because then you lose, exactly. you know, you, you lose some respect. And once you lose some respect in that room, it's hard to get it back. And people start questioning things you're doing. And you can see the last two weeks, right? Uh, uh, Brian Greasy comes out with his comment. And yep. look, uh, yeah. I thought Brian Greasy was a moron for saying that. He knows you don't yep. say that stuff on air, but but it still came out. And now that's going on. Then all of a sudden this week we're hearing about, I think Coach Nagy said something about like, look, it's all it is is looking at wristbands, right? And then Foles comes on. And he's like, well, you know, I, I don't know. We, you know, they keep, you know, when people keep saying they have a good relationship and a good communication, that means they don't. You know, you guys really <laughs> yeah, have a good you relationship. Think? You don't gotta yeah. say anything, right? Like, right, if, right. I, if I, if somebody's my friend, I don't gotta say it a hundred times. If you gotta keep saying it, then there's a problem, and there's some cracks. Just the penalties. Uh, there's just too many things in a row. Greasy. Uh, uh, the wristband. Wims punching somebody. The penalties. Now look. Uh, um, it, you, yeah. it looks like you're lacking leadership and discipline. And eventually, that, like Coach Nagy said after the game, it's a reflection on him, and that starts with him. Well, the team is a reflection of the head coach. I've spoken that on my tape breakdowns on this network. All the fans are starting to quote it and hashtag of it. This At some point, I, I personally don't see this guy's ego letting go of the play calling. Do you think it's going to get to the point where he will or has to? Is this the final act for Matt Nagy here? I, we, I hope and, he does. And I was hoping he was going to do it last year. And, you know, uh, the way I kind of said it last year was I was hoping he was going to change the scheme to benefit the team that, that he coaches because, you know, Coach Nagy, as much as I, the offense drives all of us crazy, which is, you know, gosh, I played on – Bears offense that drove us crazy for years. But, uh, you know, <laughs> the coaching staffs, I mean, you go back and look at the coaching staff, it's just insanity right. what we're doing on offense. Almost the same thing that's going on here now. But uh, I, I think that when you turn the film on and we listen to these guys talk, they do play for him, right? We have two comeback wins this year from way back. Uh, this team has shown character and grit at some points during the game. Now, obviously, I know you can go through the game 
and pick and choose and say this team had a bunch of injuries and that's why. But they still did it, right? And, uh, uh, you know, besides the Colts, not really blown out, won a tough game against Tampa. Obviously, the defense has played well, but uh, he's the head coach of the whole team. So it looks like these guys do play for him. They do mm-hmm. buy into his club dub. They do they do like the culture he creates. The only thing I start to worry about is I'm trying to see cracks because of what's going on the on the offense. And like you said, um, you you'd imagine I, I would I wouldn't be shocked to be honest, guys, if he has given a play calling and we don't know about it at points during the game. My only problem with that is if a guy's gonna call the plays, you gotta you gotta, you gotta give him the ingredients during the week for him to design the game plan so he can call and design exactly. the game he wants to call. So he has to give that up during the week. But we knew in off season, right, when he hired these guys and he looked at their backgrounds, that he was staying with the scheme. We knew that yep. from, 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 from the beginning. And you're talking about giving the play calling to two guys who, who, who one was out of the league at Penn State and DeFilippo has been fired at the last two spots he's been to. So um, I, I don't know, maybe Fury or Ragone, like we just talked about, but I don't know about Laser, and I don't know about DeFilippo because both guys haven't had a ton of success when they have been calling plays. It's a great point. It's a great point. I don't know how much longer we got you. I don't want to hold you up, but you I got are about two more minutes it. here. Two more minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, uh, we got all these people in the chat, but Shane, do you have one last question for him? Well, mine was kind of a overall I, question. I got a favor for you. Yeah, I don't think this. either one of these guys are going anywhere. I just don't know if it's if the Chicago Bears are, are willing to make the move. I mean, if if you're going to make one move with the, with the head coach or with the GM, I mean, if you're going to do one of them, I think everybody's got to go. But who do you, Owen, looking at it the way that you see it, who do you think is the bigger issue? Do you think it's the GM or do you think it's the head coach and you know the uh, the way that he's handling the offense? I really can't separate the two, and and because, but but I will say this: uh, if, you, if if they get fired because of the <laughs> offense, Ryan Pace has missed on all his offense. Yeah, mostly. Yeah. You know, Cody and James look like players. We need one of them to elevate themselves to a Pro Bowl or an All Pro level to make be a difference maker on an offensive line. But uh, the you, you trade up for the number two pick in the draft. Uh, Mr. Bisky doesn't look like well, he's not the guy. Obviously, uh, Kevin White was a miss. Then you trade for Khalil Mack, you give away two ones and a two and a three, and everybody wonders where your offensive line is. Yeah. And I think we all figure out where they are. So, um, but Coach Nagy comes in, and and, and um, he hasn't done well on offense, but he does have a winning record. So he'd be hard to get rid of. Even now, with all the complaining we're doing, they're five and three, right? They're five and three. They find a way to still one this week. Uh, they look they look in a really really good position. Although it's gonna be a rough game against the Titans. Oh, it's going to be a rough one. Real quick, before we let you go, I have a favor, but I also had a question because I sit here and we had my dad on BHL the last two weeks and he loves you. And that's old, a old line coach, right? Yes, the old, oh, yeah. old line yeah. coach was keeping it a buck on the show, calling out <laughs> the line coach. <laughs> I'll send you some video of that. He's like, he should be fired <laughs> right when he came on. <laughs> you can't. You're patty caking out there. They're patty caking. That's 72. He's awful. You need a center that's going to. Anyway, but is there coaching in your future? Because I sit here and I want. I, I can scout. I know a coach. And just listening to you tonight, I think not only are the fans in the chat fired up because of what an amazing guest you are, and that's I'm not blowing smoke up your ass. You brought it and you kept it real. But I see you and I'm like, I would play for this fucking guy. <laughs> can can we see you doing that on the NFL level? I know your son is up at Illinois. The other one's getting recruited too. Is he in school too? Uh, uh, my two boys, my, my boy will be at Illinois next year, the one yep. assigned to play there. And then my other son is a junior. So they're both still at Loyola. Um, you know, I have four young girls behind them. I coach Little League football, love it, love football, football fanatic, if that's not obvious. Yeah. Um, love the game, study it probably too much, more than I should uh, for what radio and, and TV pays me. But <laughs> Uh, I'd like to, uh, uh, maybe later, maybe later on in, you know, give it years. I'm trying to, I'm, I'm glad for this radio and TV give, keep, gig. It keeps me kind of in the game. 
Yeah. I have a gym where I have a lot of kids and uh, some NFL guys roll through and we go through techniques and, and things like that. But, but definitely at one point, I uh, would love to throw my hat in the ring to coaching yeah. and just see what, what comes of it. But um, for right now, uh, just waiting for the family to get a little bit older and move on a little more because uh, coaches, they spend a lot of time, man. Like oh, you yeah. guys know, uh, it, oh, it's, yeah. it's, it's all hours a day. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that this Zoom kind of breaks through for these guys and they don't have to be there all night, right? Because uh, yeah. uh, to be honest with you, sometimes you're in those meetings and I'm like, guys, like we went over this. Like this isn't rocket science. Like, I thought we did all of this already. I think Keep it simple, to, stupid. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think you guys are trying to justify your paychecks by staying here at 11 o'clock at night. But uh, anyway, exactly. a, short, a short answer is yes, I'd love to wonder. Well, if I ever t get a head coaching job, you're my first call. Because <laughs> I would say, you're going to be my offensive coordinator. I'm not even going to put you on the offensive line. I'm going to put you as the OC because I see what you see. And you keep it a buck, and that you'll be like, really... you'll be like, Olin, we gotta throw the ball at least. Once. <laughs> <laughs> I, you gotta know me. I think the penicillin is running the fucking football down right. people's throat, action off of it, yeah. the boot game. This offense could be cleaned up with somebody. I'm sorry, that really had a just a belief in the run game. Because let's keep it simple, stupid. Just like he said, you. If you could run block, you, everything else will come from that. This guy's teachings are way awful. Anyway, that wouldn't happen with you. That's all I know. But let, <laughs> let me ask you one favor. I know we kept you a little over the two-minute mark. Can you give us a station ID? And I'd love to bring you back later on this in this season, maybe on the end. You killed it tonight. What a great job. I, I can't thank you enough for coming on. I'll text you so you, you can send your wife your open because she <laughs> needs to see what a great man. <laughs> Hopefully convinces so, her. <laughs> <laughs> you got a lot of kids, man. I thought I had a lot of kids. Yeah. Then I'm, I've met you. Claudio and I have four kids. Claudio, What's has up, Ola? What's up, guys? How you doing, He's man? Nice barber. to meet you. Good, man. Let me, let me oh, throw a quick Jesus. question. I got to oh, do just no. a quick question. Oh, yeah. He's Listen, the biggest Rex gross. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. <laughs> I just want you to keep it. You've been keeping it 100 all night. Okay. Just keep it. I, listen, I, don't get me wrong. Grossman was not perfect. I was a defender of him. I defended him in my barbershop for years. Look at the jersey team. behind can you him. Yeah. Yeah. Can you see him? Where is he? There he is. That's not, that's not, a, that's not a Cade McNown <laughs> jersey. Just keep it 100. <laughs> just real quick. Sum up him as a quarterback, as a person, as a leader, and everything. Just just keep it 100. Go ahead. <laughs> Well, Rex, Rex wasn't really a leader, right? He wasn't really a leader. But uh, when when he was healthy, uh, Rex was a pretty damn good quarterback, man. That ball yeah. came. He it, it was amazing. It was like God touched his right arm because he didn't look like much, and that ball <laughs> yeah. would come. I mean, when he threw that thing, uh, he he yeah. could throw the the rock. Uh, you know, Rex obviously had limitations. You know, I've watched all our film. Like I told you guys, I'm a fanatic. I watched all that stuff from back then and when teams would stack up against the run and confuse them with coverages and blitzes that's where he struggled right he, he couldn't find where to go with the ball uh but but you know close to the best quarterback i played with in that in that especially that 2006 year in the beginning really 2004 he was lighting up i think before he blew his knee in minnesota yeah that was the terry I think it was terry shea's yeah. offense yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Terry Shea was so oh, well. I mean, 06 was his first season because the other two seasons he got hurt. He only played like he three got games. Hurt, right? Yeah. And, so, yeah. And in 05, he came back. I think against Atlanta after the halftime. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The so Rex ball, so chant in the stadium. Rex, Remember that? Right, yeah. 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 yeah so off was, action to Moose. First play <laughs> back was off action to Masim <laughs> Muhammad. Place with crack. Yep. Like, yeah. I think it was like he fumbled that. He fumbled that series. At the goal line. Oh, I mean, my my main thing when I'm talking oh, about him is after that, after that, this is the last keeping thing. Keeping him on on Rex for God's sake. I, listen, I gotta, hold on. Just after that, after that Super Bowl season, the team did not give him any weapons in the offense. That was my whole thing. They they got rid they of They never Thomas gave Jones. anybody any weapons in the well, they, offense. They gave Cutler some weapons. They gave Cutler some weapons. <laughs> they did give Jay some yeah. weapons, right? Yes. So. They All right, did. that's it. I had to get it in there. Thank you. Appreciate right, that. Back to your hole, Claudio. Back yeah, go back. Yeah, bye. <laughs> Thank you, Owen, for putting Appreciate up with him. No, no ah, 
I can I get you one thing? Just yeah. hey, this is Olin Krutz. You're listening to my boys on the Tape Never Lies Network, or you're keeping what, it a hundred. What uh, what network am I saying again? The Tape Never Lies Network. You're keeping it a hundred on the Tape Never Lies Network with my guys. Whatever. Something this like is that. Olin Krutz with my guys on the Tape One Hundred Network. Keeping it, <laughs> keeping it. No. Tape, I'm sorry. Say it tape again. never lies no, no. network. Yeah. The tape never lies network. Keeping it 100. Okay. Keeping it this 100 is, is the show. This is Olin Krutz. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the network is killing me. Yeah. Uh, this is Olin You're Krutz keep- with my boys on the tape never lies network. Keeping it 100. Perfect. Boom. There he is. We're not going to hire you for your acting chops only. <laughs> I saved that for Thomas it. Jones. Yeah. <laughs> Has Thomas called you up? Yo, they got a, a Marvel character. You'd be perfect. I could see you in that movie with Marvel. He's having so much success, man. That guy, oh, man. Yeah. He's amazing, man. Hey, thanks so much. You're amazing. We enjoyed that. Have a great night. Thank you too, you. man. Thank you so much. What a what a guest. Yeah. Look at Claudio. Yeah, awesome. Proud of himself. I am Rex. proud. He, you know, he. Hey, listen. He said he was one of the best guys he played with. So I, I, I'm, the I'm best part was you saying, "You know, talk about Rex leader." He goes, "Well, he wasn't much of a leader." <laughs> <laughs> the leader went right out the doorway. Oh, that was great. I mean, unreal. Great questions. So you guys brought it with the questions to him. He really, yeah, he he's he great because really, he's yeah he's, he's not going to mess Shane around. Said. He yeah. said he's exactly what Shane said. He fits in perfect here. His his reputation alone, like Ray yeah. Perez is saying, he's a legend. That's absolutely. You know, that's fucking NFL royalty. There. He. What did he give us here? About an hour. A, yeah. Whole, yeah. a fucking hour of his time here. Yeah. You Great got dude. the best. I don't know. That was probably one of the best interviews yeah, I've been a in part of. Were, yeah, people in the chat were loving it. Listen, the tape never lies in that work. Even though Olin was messing it up. He only fumbled the snap once like Rex against the Falcons. <laughs> and and really, I got to say this, you know, it means a lot to me to be a part of this, but to be able to speak to somebody that knows the game and seeing the big pictures, like it just reemphasizes the work that we've done here on the tape to showcase these problems truthfully to you fans out there and and that's really what we do and that's what we'll continue to do and that's the only reason why someone like that will come on a show and have laughs with guys that love this game love this team and really study it so yeah well, i think the biggest thing phil i think and olin's a no-nonsense guy i think he's been on with us enough he knows that we're putting in the work. We're watching exactly. the tape, and we He's understand. My it. tape breakdown he, today. He's, absolutely, but I think I think he knows that we're not bullshit, and we're not you know cookie cutter. And I th- I think he does appreciate that. I said he every time he's on every time he comes back with us it just gets better and better. Oh my god, that was just if you love the game of football, if you love what we're doing, you know, right here, Chuck and Lydia Goring, he's. 414 patron go over mm-hmm. to the patreon get in there we're almost at oh, 420 oh, for oh. claudio special t-shirt oh. shane where's yeah. that drop shane oh we're getting yeah, we're oh, slipping okay. smoke weed every day <laughs> it was right on cue there he is right look on. at him right on cue all the nerd attacking every Nerds are coming. <laughs> it's like a fucking uh, what is a zombie movie with these nerds. They're all coming out. They all have the answers. But tonight we had the Hall of Famer, and I think Cars, our next guest. <laughs> He's Cars. Keys, yes, you pressed the button on this guy. Cars, what's up, man? Your hiatus, the suspension has been lifted. You are the Javon Wims 
of the Tate Never Lies Network. Oh, I can see Carr throwing down. I can see oh. him throwing down. I mean, without question. I think I would not punch a guy with a helmet on. But Yeah, that is pretty I saw him beat up a librarian from New York once. Paul Martin, oh, his yeah. name was. <laughs> Came off oh, the top man. rope on that yeah. That's for sure. Listen, if you're new to the show, this is our guy, Cars. He actually embraces embraces the role of being a nerd and thank you uh, i hope that you were able to cars listen to olin Krutz and catch some of that because i honestly what a great interview what a great human being great football mind i think chicago media is dropping the ball by just putting him on that show he should be center stage out there in my opinion because there's not enough transparency and truthfulness when it comes to the real issues. And tonight, he fuck, he pulled back the curtain and he was throwing some fucking... He was the anti-Javon Wims with the sucker punches. He was just... He was throwing some fucking jabs right into the fucking chest, the skull, the Tyson uppercut with some power behind it, so... I hope you caught it. Did you? Were you able to watch that, or you're gonna have to go back and watch? I have to go back. I was putting uh, the kids to bed. Oh, you know the you know the daddy, routine. I oh, do. Yeah. Always, always a job. There's always yeah. a job. Well, you're gonna have to go back and watch what Olin said because any kind of love affair that you continue to have with Matt Nagy <laughs> is probably. <laughs> and look, I had a good run. I think my suspension is back on. Uh, thanks, everybody. Wait, do, we, do we have that video? We do. Yeah, we we do. That video. We have some breaking news. Breaking news. Breaking news. The Saint Never Lies Network. Breaking news. keeping it 100 crew. I understand there are some concerns that Phil and Shane may have uh, suspended me for pro Matt Nagy sentiments um, and I would like to set the record straight. So I have a written statement by Shane and Phil by myself uh, about this supposed suspension. I in no way shape or form was suspended for defending Matt Nagy at any point in time. They did not suspend me. I have had an error in judgment and will no <laughs> longer support Matt Nagy, as you can see. <laughs> Thank you for your concerns, but I have just had an epiphany and come to see the errors in my way and this is not in any way, shape, or form modified by Phil or Shane <laughs> or Claudio or all three of them yelling at me for hours every week. Thank you. <laughs> oh, man. You can hear the kids running around in the background. You got... You you brought it there, and yes, that was a Patreon exclusive for the week that Shane shared. We brought it out on keeping it. Hard. Cars has a has a lot of fans on Patreon. Yes. Yes. That was a very popular video. Yeah, there you I, go. I don't know why. Um, if I read the chat, it's the exact opposite way normally. <laughs> I, I normally see a lot of wishes of death and bodily harm. So it was it was nice to get a little positivity in. <laughs> Well, you're a great sport, and that's what this network needs. There's been a lot of past history with me and Shane where the pussification of America shows its head and people get so <clears throat> offended. But someone who embraces the nerd and embraces the truth and, and brings their own opinion. Your, your opinion is value, you know, valued here. It's, we don't have to agree with it. That, that's what makes this so special. It's like there's no, there's no script. There's no questions that were written for Olin. We're just talking off the top of our heads and really having a great <laughs> conversation. So, yeah, me and you do not agree. Obviously, we didn't want to bring Olin on, and he would probably punch you like he did Listen, Fred Miller. Listen, Big Mills. Cat was... 
Big Cat was scared of him. Like, there's there's <laughs> legit concern, right? Big Cat was hey, six, he, seven, three, fifty. He brought up not. he brought up Big Cat because we were talking about Charles Leno wearing the sleeves, and oh, Olin yeah. had a Olin had a. He's like, fuck yeah, I would I would address that. He, he goes, when I came to Chicago, he's like, I put sleeves on, and Big Cat's like, yeah, son, we don't wear sleeves here. We don't. And he goes, that was all it took. That was all it took. Listen, that was an interview that you have to rewatch. Yeah. If you didn't catch the beginning of the show, the show opened, it led right into Olin, and Olin just fucking, it's like, better than the fireworks on the 4th of July. Yeah. If you're a Chicago Bears fan, that's an hour an hour of yeah, Acevedo is gonna pull that I hope interview, awesome. and we're gonna I was, we're gonna post that exclusively on Patreon, just the interview for everybody, because yeah. it was amazing. It, it was, really was. It really was. And if you're a fan of the Chicago Bears, and you're you're a fan of the tape, never lies. Olin addressed all the issues that I've been showing you week after week, and then gave you a little bit behind the scenes. So we, we got some breaking news tonight. I don't know if you caught it. Do we have to play it again? Yeah, fuck it. We're going to play the drop again. We love <laughs> this breaking news drop. Right, Claudia? Breaking news. The tape never lies. Network breaking news. Yes. It's breaking news here at the Tape Never Lies Network. I don't know if you caught it, but I did. And I hope he doesn't get offended. But our guest kind of gave us a freaking nice fastball down the middle and said, we might be seeing Alex Bars at center this weekend against the Tennessee Titans. So there's a nugget. Because we were asking that question prior to having Olin on. Like, what are they going to do at center? I really thought... For going and being thrown into the fray, I thought Mustafa had some lapses, obviously, but Olin said exactly what I saw. At least there's an understanding of what's going on, and he's getting after it. So Alex Bars at center. I wonder how they're going to run at uh, coward at tackle. So I'm wondering who's going to be that left guard. It's Hambright. Is Hambright going to get it's in gonna there? Be, yeah, it's going to be Hambright. You know what? This, this is the funniest shit ever because I remember um, coaching and I had a kid that I never thought could, you know, we got injuries, so we had to put him in. And then some reason this kid just responded to the game and, and really ultimately, <laughs> I, I can pray that this is going to work. <laughs> Like, that maybe you find a little golden nugget there and that Rashad Coward should be the tackle. Me and Steve Edwards, who, I, I, this dude is a great dude. If you, I thought he was a great, obviously his mic stuff held back the quality because he fit right in just the same, Shane, uh, as Olin, just bringing it. He's oh, yeah. somebody that will want to come back on. And chop it up with us. I've been talking to him. And he he felt like me. Rashad is thinking way too much. He's yep. throwing. Olin broke it and down. Right you know, tackle, at this, right guard, left guard. At it's this like, point. but so the, dumb. What other team do you see I shuffle their I offense? I mean, team. I understand right now you have to with the, with the injuries. But, I mean, you have. <laughs> oh, they God. they did it. The they did it back with. I mean, Kyle Long. His best three years were his first three years in Chicago. He was dominant, and they were bouncing him around all the time. You see it with Cody Whitehair oh, bouncing God. him around, James Daniels bouncing him around. I mean, Rashad Coward is a tackle, and now he's a, then he's a right guard, and now he's a left guard. Bars is good enough to be your backup left guard, and you give him a, a few quarters, and now now you're moving him out to right tackle, and then now you're putting right him there. at center. Yeah, white, he's left guard. They go get yep, white hair. Remember that same guy's thing. name? They move him to center. Then they draft Daniels to move him to left guard, and then yeah. push what was him the kid like, from the Rams? They picked him up. He was on the fucking hard knocks. Remember this dude? Oh, uh, oh, the Kush. the tank top Kush. guy. Yeah, Kush. Yeah. Fucking Claudio four twenty drop right there. On the <laughs> I'm not. I'm, I'm not. I'm not on my game, man. But here we. Here we go. Smoke weed every day.
<laughs> every uh reference i to love that the line. funky Sounds marijuana great. which is legal in in the state of illinois now so cars is a very lucky nerd we're very very happy every evening nerd <laughs> yeah. that's for sure <laughs> it's like your glass of wine it's instead it's a puff of wine right it's, it's six edibles you know whatever whatever <laughs> works six. tomato six. tomato six. Lord. you know <laughs> six edibles holy shit <laughs> oh wow <laughs> anyway we've seen it it's it's so tiresome. I, I really think if you really listen to what Olin's given you, and this will be the last time, great interview, but he's given you some nuggets if you just pay attention of how absolutely lost Matt Nagy is as a head coach and what he's doing with his staffs and where he's pointing fingers and blame instead of putting it right here on his own shoulders. And, and really... You know, it goes back to Shane when my dad was on. This is a guy learning to be a head coach on the job with the Chicago Bears. And yeah. to me, that is a Ryan Pace issue because he's the one who hired this yeah. fucking guy when he wasn't ready, wasn't prepared. He was trying to catch the the copycat league of finding the young offensive guru. Put up some of those fucking number shane do you have that those numbers or can we upload those offensive statistics i mean to me i'm not a stat scout i don't do that but what i see on the film is is you know shepherd's pie of offense it's fucking everything throwing yeah i can just i can read them right here phil just as quick the uh, 4.79 yards per play is 30th in the NFL. 3.81 yards per carry, 29th. 5.64 yards per pass, 29th. 3.13% interception rate, 26th. 6.27 sacks per pass, 17th. God. That's our highest one. You're such a nerd. Yeah. 34.9% 30, on third down is 31st. 20.1%. Uh, points per game is 28th in the NFL. And the the good thing about it is, Phil, we, uh, I forget who originally brought up the, the question in the chat a couple of weeks ago asking who or what player has improved under Nagy during his tenure here. We kind of settled on James Daniels, Daniels and Olin went the same direction. And after that, he, well, he did bring up... He did bring up Allen Robinson, but we didn't put him in there because Allen Robinson was very, very good in yes. Jacksonville. I mean, he put up a 1,400-yard season and 14 touchdowns in one one season there. But that's, I don't know, Cars, could could you add to that list off the top of your head? Somebody that's really improved on the offensive side of the ball under think, Matt Nagy? I think Cohen, look, I mean, it, it's slim pickings because we've done, right. we've drafted so poorly in those positions. I'll say Cohen has definitely become more well-rounded, especially in the as a receiver. But no, it's like Anthony Miller is still the same guy he was. Yep. Wims and Ridley, I mean, well, who knows about Ridley? Um, I don't even know. Yeah, I mean... The, the I think you nailed it early, Phil. The bigger problem has always been Ryan Pace. It doesn't absolve yeah. Matt Nagy, but like it's it's bad. It's yeah. it's been bad. And, and you really gotta hard. hope that something I don't give a like Ted Phillip, we've done this whole fucking story. Until and I will we'll say it quick and then we're gonna get into the bear up, bear down if you're new to that. Bear up is a positive player of the game, and bear down is the negative. It's the opposite way, and we're going to get into that. I just want to do bear down this week. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's a couple bear ups, but yeah. um, real quick, I just think you know this is talked about countless times mm-hmm. on this <clears throat> network and the previous network, but by me and Shane always saying until you get a president. Yeah. That's a football motherfucker. That yeah. that's the only thing because this family, starting... this family's all living off the money of the fucking team. Their their hands are out like mm-hmm. oh, whatever. I don't I don't care. Think about yeah, that. It's like you're they're there to get paid. Nephew, they're not your they're... cousin. That's a fucking Foot... crackhead. Football's not, not a there priority. To help you? Yeah, football's not. Just give me the money. Just give me the money. Just give me the money. And and Ted Phillips is sitting there. 
he's getting paid, so he's like, that's fine. Let's I was hire Ernie. <laughs> let's, yeah. Let's hire Ernie accountant. Accorsi, a fucking former blog boy himself, to figure this out. What? No, that's get why Bill Parcells in here. He'll you have to the get the ownership. Out. Like, yeah. it, it, sadly for most of us, it's going to take Virginia dying, right? Yeah. Whenever well, yeah. that happens. Because all the kids are going to want out at that point. They and... have to get out. They have to get the fuck. Because Ted Phillips and this, you got to get a president. That is a football guy. Owner, you're going to get... This is the NFL. It's like yeah. a fucking casino. There's a reason why there's gold ceilings. They don't fucking lose. <laughs> well, that's the best That's the best part. You know, they're talking about the COVID situation and it affecting the salary cap. Like, these guys just all of a sudden ran out of fucking money. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> well, we didn't make it money. this year, so we're going to have to fucking back everything the up. fucking Madden game paid <laughs> yeah, for right. everybody themselves. Exactly. It's like, come on, the fucking Sunday ticket. They're charging extra money to fucking stream more streams. of the. They have every fucking way around to make money that's why it's ridiculous even in covid i wanted to talk about this tonight we'll talk about it later claudia don't let us forget i'm sending you this note but the covid situation they might have to fucking just start adding more bodies to the practice squad to cover yourself here because it is getting scary and i honestly don't want to see this season canceled but I, I just don't know how a guy like uh, Spriggs is playing in the game and he has COVID, right? And he's blocking the fuck and he's whiffing or whatever, and, but he's blocking those guys. So well, he's, don't, doesn't the Saints, don't his you is, the protocol? His is different because he was high risk because he was in the vicinity, correct? Isn't that what, isn't oh, that what Spriggs? I, I thought he was tested and that's positive. Why and that's why Leno can't get it because he's never in the vicinity. Right, right, right. So that's that's how that's that is, works. That's why COVID doesn't it. go on the ground. He's always rolling on the ground. <laughs> Somebody, the <laughs> way that was very well played by all of you. Somebody on Facebook was like, "Phil, uh, God has something to get this. This guy yeah. can't get injured. He can't get COVID. Yeah, everybody else on the line is something happened. To him. We're never going to see a game without this guy. I." I I just can't. Anyway, bear up, bear down. Let's get into it. Every week, some of your favorite. You guys in the chat room, join in the game. We always start on the negative side, and we snake this week. We'll start with Claudio. You'll start us off, and then we'll go back. Philatosian. Shane Marshall, the Tape Never Lies Network. A bear up, a bear down. It's draft Dr. Phil and the smartest men around. A bear up, a bear down. It's draft Dr. Phil and the smartest men around. A bear up, a bear down. It's draft Dr. Phil and the smartest men around. A bear up, a bear down. It's draft Dr. Phil and the smartest men around. A bear up. This week. Draft Dr. Phil and Shane Marsaw, the smartest men. Bear ups and bear downs of the week. Yes, bear up, bear down. A lot of people love that song. It's Shane Marsaw's favorite Draft Dr. Phil song. It's one of them. Yep. There's one of them. Play it all, play it all the time. I'm glad you play it. You rock that. <laughs> That's what he he does every morning. He's working out, you know. He's just kind of yeah. uh, doing bear, the curls. Uh, uh, that's and, because yeah. he's in the song. He loves it. Yeah. <laughs> Claudio, All right. bear down. Kick us off. I mean, I see it in the chat room here, Alex. So. <laughs> 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 I was just, listen, Jimmy Graham. Jimmy, listen, Jimmy. <laughs> Shane. <laughs> I'm going to get you from with one of those. You watch. Dude. One of these. Are, um, so, Jimmy Graham, I mean, the dude just he drops balls in the worst fucking times. I mean, overtime, you know, that, that was a huge drop. And he's just, he just not bringing it, you know. He makes some big plays once in a while, but he's just not consistent enough. And, uh, you know, that's it. So, so you're Jimmy saying Graham, I was, you were, you're saying that I was right back in. Yeah, don't tell nobody. Don't tell nobody. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think that's so I know Phil was Please. stroking himself about being I mean, right, listen. so I think I'm going to do it oh, now. I, I mean, he makes great. I mean, dude, that one handed <laughs> catch, he does still yeah. make some great plays. So he is and not you're being both used right. correctly. I yeah. Olin hit it out of the park. Like you're a dumb fucking coach if you can't understand that he. <laughs> they sure finally, they finally hit the seam route, and they they get a fucking big pass interference call out of it. Exactly. Yeah. That's what he is. He's yeah. your wide tight end. You're not. Are you asking Ertz or? This dude, why is he escaping my name? Kelsey, Kelsey. Kelsey thank you. Yeah. To fucking inline block? That's not his go-to. He's not coming back and kicking out. You know, Kittle could do that shit. He's one of the best I've ever seen. Kittle at blocking. Holy fuck. But anyway, He's that's out guy. for, what, eight weeks yeah, or something? Yeah, he like hurt his yeah. foot. Dude, yeah. You see what he said, though? You got to love it. He said, I'll be back in two. Yeah, he said, out eight weeks. And he said, he'll be back in two. He said, he'll I be back that. in two. Like, the fucking pace right there. I mean, you remember me. Like, yeah. you got to draft Kittle in the second round. We got Shaheen. Shaheen got a contract extension. Yeah. All it took was f- five holy catches. Sh- like, yeah. holy, holy shit. shit. All five catches. Let's, let's fucking give him an extension. <laughs> anyway, yeah, Jimmy Graham, had that was an awful game. But he did take yeah. ownership of that. So yeah, he did. Yeah, he hopefully, did. Hopefully, and, and really quick, I, I don't know if you got to see Cars. The tape never lies today. Uh, came out, obviously, on the patronage side, 43 minutes, breaking down offense, defense, as Shane put it, the whole enchilada. And then the shorter version on the our YouTube channel, more condensed just to focus on offense. And I'm just saying, I'm saying... I'm saying this, Sean Payton is a guy that sends messages and the way the New Orleans Saints were attacking Jimmy Graham to get him out of his game was to drive right at his knees and every Oh man, they they, they went low pe- so many times on him. Wait till yeah. you, you haven't seen it because I documented on there. I know some of the the people in the chat have seen the fucking and the refs aren't doing shit about it and it was getting to the point it was six seven times it's getting disgusting and, and this dude could have been too. hurt yeah it was, oh yeah 100 yeah. percent. that's yeah. why he dropped that last ball they they tackled him in the legs at the last he he bends so awkwardly like fuck that like you're a head coach i would have fucking went out on the field and done something to let these refs know that that shit is not and nothing's done i couldn't believe it Saints, like you said, Tony, Greg Williams, Sean Payton. What was the what was their game? Bounty game. Bounty remember? Game, yes. Yep. Don't yep. put it past this guy was a saint. Payton knows exactly what would get Jimmy pissed off, and it's goddamn chess. And Sean Payton, to his credit, offensively as a head coach, is one of the best there is. How am I attacking somebody I know? I'm fucking taking them out in their head. That's exactly what happened, and, and and unfortunately Jimmy did not. So it was a good, good, so good Jimmy, discussion yeah. there. Hopefully Jimmy comes after he went out and tweeted that Shane. Let's see because he's been our best red zone weapon. I even put the play up there. Uh, cars, they fucking have Jimmy just running that corner route, and all Foles has to. He's got a pocket. Yeah. It's like a miracle. Didn't all he has to do is he didn't even look. He just fucking threw it to Nall, and then yep. later they came back to to it and they hit it. But it was only for a first down that set up the the patented, as I call it, the Matt Nagy gimmick play inside the fucking fifteen yard line. The patented Nagy reverse double sweep, whatever. Anyway, my bear down, Claudio. Yes, and Jimmy Graham. The chat. Yours. Go ahead. Yes, Jimmy Graham is my bear down. Make it official. There you go. You made it official. I'm going to go with my guy. Now, we talked about it with Olin. I'm going to talk about it again real quick. I have played this game, coached it. What Javon Wims did on every level is just, you can't just, I don't give two fucks what he did. This one's the secret spitter, as I put it, in the open cars. We're going to play it again at the end. Now Claudio gets it. Why? Has anybody seen There's anything no... that makes him makes them believe that he was Dude. spit on at that point? Because it's there's going to be an instant Dude. reaction if you're spit exactly. on. Let and me I tell just... you a quick story. As I said, I, was in, I worked in juvenile corrections. 
I had to go into the fucking cell. Kids steal shit, whatever the play. We had to go in. I got spit in the face. I literally lost all my control of my life. I don't even, I blacked out. I just went crazy. I think I picked this kid up and slammed him in, onto the bed. And lo- I, had, I had to get removed by a guy that was 6'5", because you lose it. So to Shane's point, I'm keeping it 100. I got removed by my partner because I lost my mind instantly when you got spit in the... There's nothing more disrespectful. So to Olin's point, as we're putting this all together, we saw the guy fucking pull his mouth guard out. I had the Walter Payton mouth guard. Remember that? When it mm-hmm. had the front, it protected your lip. and Because I loved Walter. So someone ripped that shit out. I wanted oh, that motherfucker. I got him the next play. I fucking just went totally at that motherfucker and got him the next play. That's how you do it. To go out there like that and to p- have five catches on the season. To go out there and go out and, and one-on-one with him and not do shit, but then to come out and sucker punch him and think that it's cool and it represents something, that doesn't represent shit. Anybody could do that. My you hit a son guy could in go a, helmet. a helmet, and it didn't do any like. It's, it's it was embarrassing. Yeah, I mean you could break your hand. You could break your hand. I mean you're just it's just, just stupid. You could break your hand by doing that. Like why? But you punch the guy in the helmet. Like of, of everywhere to hit somebody, if you want to do damage, right? Like the most protected part of the yeah. body. Like what, Olin said. Olin doing? said in that situation, you give him the uppercut and then go yeah. straight to the fucking liver. Yes. <laughs> not the rib. Yeah. So that, that sounds like very old. But that's, yeah. but that's the reality, cars. Like yeah. I would have so much more respect for it if it was straight up your one on one, and it fucking got physical thereafter, and yeah. you're there. It was run in, off, pull this, punch, step back. It was like some yeah. choreographed dance move. It was like fucking breaking yeah. three. It was you ridiculous. You still think they should cut him, Phil? I or kind it? of I coiled back on that. I thought about it overnight. I, I don't like selfish players, but I think if Khalil Mack did that, are we going to cut Khalil Mack? No. Oh, so no. here's no, the I situation. Yeah. I wanted the head coach to lay down the suspension. This guy's going to – I already spoke. Yeah. He fucking lied. Olin called it out too. He knew about it. He lied. I, I didn't see it. My head was in the playbook, as my father said on the BHL. But, yeah, I don't think you can cut him after you see the whole picture. The guy did pull it, and we're going to talk about it. But as a head coach, I'm addressing that right after the game. I saw it. That is not us. That you're, He's a reflection of me. Me and Javon are going to talk about it. We already did talk about it. I can't share with what we said, but it ain't good. It's not pretty, and it was embarrassing to me, the whole team. That's how you handle it as a yeah, head coach. I thought, quite honestly, I would have come right out that night and said, Javon's going to be Suspended. sitting down versus yeah. Tennessee. Exactly. You know, if, even if it was for that one way. game and yep. been proactive. Now well, I know you think he should. You think he should bench him after the suspension too? So like no, I think it's, I think it's, it's added suspension. No. He, he took the pussy way out. I'm, I'm yeah. just keeping it well, real. Listen, he let the NFL you knew, suspension. You knew the NFL was going to give him at exactly. least a game. So that's yeah. why you're proactive with it and you say, hey, we're going to set him down. He's not going to even travel with us to, to, to Nashville. Yeah. You know, we'll, we'll replace him. But think about that the way, selfishness but, yeah. of the player in that. And I think some of these. Uh, fans that are against me and i see them in the youtube channel no fuck that he did this he did that you have to understand there's 53 other guys there 53 Mm -hmm. that that penalty reflects on them everybody's talking to them and it affects the game it did did it affect the outcome of the game you can argue how it killed momentum it puts you back in an offense that sucks falls through through the pick Right, yeah. next throws play. the pick the next play. Next play. Yeah. I, one of the worst picks I've ever fucking seen. I don't even know where he's throwing the ball. I don't know that we can ever say that, Phil. We've seen Rex Grossman play quarterback. We've seen oh. Shane Matthews. Ooh, look at Claudio. Claudio. Uh, yeah, uh, right in front of him. Right in front of him. Smoke weed every day. Smoke weed every day. 
<laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, we're, we're, that's how we're yeah. doing this. You suspend me, I'm coming for you, Claudia. <laughs> I, I have nothing to do with that. If I was asked, I had nothing to well, do with that. I think it's a millennial thing that we're like protecting our territory and this, that. No, this is it. Listen, I can go into depth about it, but let's keep it real here. It's, I'm team together. Like us guys, even though we joke around with cars, he, he's my fucking dude. I got his back 100%. That's how it is. And, and that's how I coach my teams. I, I see some of my former players that watch this. They're not even Bears fans. They watch the show. They know every time, even now with these little kids. Ask Claudio. I'm like, get your hands in. We do together oh, yes. on three. I'm surprised. Always. Yeah, I'm surprised you haven't made any of them cry yet. <laughs> I did You're make fucking, that kid well, I, I, I did, hard Have you made Claudia <laughs> I'm like, cry? That's like more yin, logical. No, it's the yin Claudia yang. was helping Phil's, me. He's Phil, yeah, good I'm, cop. I'm exactly. Bad. He's bad cop. I'm good. <laughs> Shocker. He, Shocker. Phil yells at him, and then I take him to the side. I'm like, it's okay. You did good. Job. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Steph <laughs> goes to me real quick. Goes, you got to be nicer on these kids. He's he's crying over there. I go, no, there's no crying on the football field. You, oh. you got to learn it about, now. <laughs> His father's like no. that. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. Javon Wims, you are my bear down. There you go. Cars, you have your bear down. Oh, it's no <laughs> It's the easiest one I've had uh, in a long time, but it is Rashad Coward. Oh, yep. my God. That may have been the worst guard game I have seen in my life. That yeah, was. I agree. The, the play where they show the stunt. And he has oh, no my idea what he's doing. Oh, I, it's on I the mean, tape number even one. Olin tried to explain that, and I was even at that. I'm like, nah, I can't. I can't even. No, no it was no. just. Oof, that it's, was bad. it's like the guys in major league where they hit the home run. The guys like, no, nah, man, it's too high. Like you can't talk yourself out of that stupid play. Like you were, you were brutal. And so, oh. I hope to God he plays better at right tackle. Um, but. Sh- I don't I know think how he's he still on this play, football team. I think he'll play better at right tackle. I'll put, well, I'll save that for. Well, that's a low bar, though. Like, <laughs> you know, he blocks two guys. Well, he's only 5'2", two yeah. so. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Here we go. <laughs> so, yeah, Rashad Coward is my uh, bear down player. There you go. Rashad Coward. Rashad, Rashad. Shane, you get the double dip here. You're bear down. Yeah. And you switch it around. I am gonna go with number nine, Nick Foles. I was really there disappointed. I mean, I know that the the offensive line was in shambles. We know that, but there was a lot of plays there where he had the actual fucking pocket. I mean, Troy Aikman brought it up. Sometimes you just gotta fucking step see up. it and step up in the pocket. And we saw so much of Jay Cutler in Nick Foles because it was retreat, retreat, retreat fall backwards and throw the football and i mean it there was a couple of my what are you what are you doing i that mean interception Phil, was so yeah bad. it's unacceptable you can't i mean oh you my gosh. you brought this guy in here to know your offense to know know it inside and out and it's they didn't bring him in here to look like a rookie quarterback that lost all fundamentals and hey listen i know that he's not the most fleet of foot that play at the end of the game where he got fucking sacked oh i should have uploaded it the the i mean oh, you you might, at, you might see it didn't cut it out you might okay oh, a little teaser a little tease? yeah, yeah. You, you at the very fucking least you have to just try because you're gonna get it he's gonna get four or five yards at least on that and that's just i know football is a mental game and you gotta you gotta believe in it and if you're not believing in the guys in front of you that's going to be a big, big issue. But there was too many throws that I saw out of Nick Foles uh, Sunday that just I'm like, come on, man. That's not why they brought you here at all. So Nick Foles, you're my bear down. His very you. end of uh, Drew Bledsoe, right? Like where he was just a yeah. statue and just yeah. seeing oh ghosts God. and feeling that's ghosts. Great comp. Yeah. That's That's what I see so much in him right now. Like he's it's you're seeing things that aren't there you've been hit too much and it, it's there's a timer on every quarterback that they get there and it's just a matter of when true Bledsoe is a great comp to that play philip rivers for all his inability to move 
somehow finds a way to step up in the pocket yeah. and deliver uh, foals in this game. He didn't do it. I, I said it on the tape, never lie, Shane. The same thing. He's got to be able to do it real quick. You guys, if you're not yet a part of the Patreon Tape Never Lies Network, you're missing out. Go over to www.thetapeneverlies.com. Become a Patreon. Live shows. Listen, we're just starting with what we're doing. And we're working out the kinks. You're getting extra analysis over there today. 20 minutes or 23 minutes on YouTube. Over there, offense, defense, special teams. 43 minutes. If you love X's and O's. Halftime talks and discussions, all of it broken down. We're gonna even we're even in talks with writers. One of them might be on our show. That might be writing on our our channel over there. We're getting to it. So. Yeah, that was a shitty sound effect. Jesus. Yeah, but you gotta change that. Become a the, Patreon. Claude, I'm not trying to take away from your segment, but I just want to put a still photo up just to show people what I'm talking about. And you see Nick Foles yeah. there. This is this it's is that run. play. Yep. Yeah, I mean. You're getting to at least the 38. Yeah, and I mean, it's just he, he made it worse, way worse oh, by yeah. not. It's, yeah. you, you, just, you just can't on a team – that has so many issues like the Bears do offensively. You, a veteran quarterback that's familiar with this offense like he is, you can't you can't double down and, and, and make it worse like that. No way. No fucking way. Philotosian, Shane Marshall. The Tape Never Lies Network. A bear up! There you go. Bear up, Shane. Bear up. Who's your bear up this game? I am I think I might have went with the same guy last week. I'm not 100% sure, but Roquan, I'm very, very happy with the mindset that uh, number 58 is playing with. Roquan is becoming that guy. Just the, the one... The one play, man. I just, I thought he had the walk off. Yeah. I really did. It, that would have been, that would have been the perfect capper, and I think that, that would have propelled him honestly for the rest of the season. But he's making the plays consistently now, all over the field that we've been waiting for. It's gotta, it's gotta continue. And I brought it up with Olin, and he agreed yeah. with Chuck Pagano's. Uh, you know, where we talked about situationally where he's being passive and it's all a direct result of where the offense is. But at some point, you're going to have to consistently deploy this kid in Seeker some blitz mode. packages. Yeah, yeah. To, 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 to disrupt plays because he's, so, he's compact, but he's so goddamn explosive. And he's the perfect person or the perfect player for that situation and he's a guy that's got to step up really really big this week in nashville i mean for the bears to have any any chance because this is the week to me with the, the offense is let's yep. be honest it's a wild card every week but we really don't know what's going to happen this weekend i think you just have to take chances on defense you I think the it. defense is going to have to score for these guys to have a chance, and I think a big part of that is going to be Pagano unleashing Roquan on some blitzes. So keep it up, 58, man. He, he's he's exactly what we drafted him for. So Roquan Smith, you are my bear up. Look at you. Really good choice. I got to say this real quick. Tremendous uh, effort. Uh, I really thought Pagano made an error in judgment in attacking this team. And, and granted, the Bears yeah. did a good job, but my game plan would have been 58 on 41 wherever, every day, all day. Every passing down, that's Manda. That's your guy. And, and really, there's a play on the Patreon that I put up 
that just show isolates on Roquan Smith. And he's one-on-one -on -one versus probably, in my opinion, the best running back out of the backfield in the NFL. And it's not close. He understands <clears throat> his leverage concept. And now the dude catches the ball. But the appreciation for the closing burst and the ability to not get burnt at the stem against that Texas route, you, you can't even understand how hard that is as a linebacker to be put isolated on an island one-on-one -on -one against that kind of athlete. And Roquan not only covers him, he gets his hand in there trying to get the ball out and wraps him up and brings him down. It's one of the most impressive plays I've seen a defender make, and that's with Khalil Mack's plays this year. It was just the the epitome of what you want to do. And I really think if Pagano would have taken that chance and gotten that dude out of the game, you, you probably would have run won that football game. And and, uh, and the fourth down play, Shane, he's icing and cars and Claudio, he's isolating in there. Fucking Khalil Mack takes Ram check and fuck shit. <laughs> Dude, Good God. Yes. He took a guy that's like four times his size. Like Ramchek is a fucking freak in nature, yeah. power and stuff. <laughs> lifts him up and just I wish I isolated more on. I gotta do that for Patreon. I'm just gonna take that fourth down toss and just show you what Khalil Mack does to the line of scrimmage. And <laughs> it's disgusting. And like, then it is Roquan really just fucking fires right through the gap and just boom and that's really that's really gets me excited i love it i love it i love the pick cars who's your guy since shane's not here to well i mean it's easy it's matt net oh wait sorry um no um <laughs> i would <have> kill you <laughs> <laughs> no, remove no. From... <laughs> yeah remove from show <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> uh, for me, it's it's actually it goes back to the tried and true. It's Darnell Mooney, um, oh. who's really been so impressive Claudius. on his route yeah. running. I didn't yeah, think it was, well, I don't think it was. It's like a fantasy draft. Exactly. I had the last pick. There's yeah. no way that guy was going to get to me. <laughs> yeah, he. I mean, he, we saw it the week before in the way that he kind of just broke uh, Ramsey's ankles. We saw that continuing this past week. He runs really good routes. He's got the speed, like. We were all wondering when that big play was going to come, um, and he finally got one of them, and I, I hope that that snowballs. But, you know, he's he's cemented that number two position for us. It's not even a question after that right. OT drop for Anthony Miller, right? <laughs> like, it's 100% he's the guy, and uh, I'm hoping this, this builds to something bigger. So son, Darnell Mooney is my bear up. My Player son's of the week. becoming a big Mooney fan because of Mo Uncle Mooney. Claudi Claudio yeah. with Mo Mooney. Mo, Mo Mooney. Mooney. Mo it's Mo like Knox. I I see Johnny Knox so much in that, and I love Johnny as a player. And I just see all those little flashes of that guy who's like a little too thin that you think, but it plays much bigger than he is, and I love it. I love it. Oh, I felt I put it up on the tape. Never lies. The deep ball where he tracks back and he's getting interfered with a hundred out of a hundred. If he was a veteran player, that flag would have came out. The refs blew that call. Uh, he adjusts in the air to the route like a, a, a true pro. Yeah. And what's his name? 23 is draped on him, impeding him to adjust. I, I couldn't believe it wasn't called. The more I watched it, the angrier I got. Great pick. This guy going down the football field, down the finally connected with Nick Foles. And uh, I think he's better than Johnny Knox, to be honest. That That's how I, I, his ability to recognize the ball and the, the, the velocity of it. And then some of the routes. And, and you're seeing the Bears are getting predictable now with him. They're going to put him back on. You're going to see it again this week. You're going to put him back on the wing. He's going to go in motion, breathe a wing, and then he's going to come back, and they're trying to find his leverage. Uh, coach, just start running him on a skinny post. Get mm -hmm. get that safety to start tracking this fucking kid because you could put him in the slot or outside. This kid is dangerous, and he's not just a nine-route guy. You know those guys. Yeah. They just could just run a fade. This kid could do the tree, and, and it's really exciting to see. So. Good yeah, choice. Cutting pace, 
Ryan Pace drafted a nine route guy seventh overall in a draft. Let's not yes. forget that. So yeah, Mooney's just getting better every week. And yeah, he's I, mean, I picked him up. I picked him up and started him in my fantasy team that this week. And he's a rookie. Week. And, and he's I won. A rookie. I mean, I, he's I just got, got, got a, the he's got a charge work. less for his fucking hoodies. <laughs> <laughs> Mooney. I didn't, but yeah, I got the eighty-five hat. I bucks. Can't do the hoodie. We're yeah, gonna, can't do we're the hoodie. gonna be having I got some the hat, swag. But I can't do the hoodie. How about that? Let's yeah, we are. Let me put that up there, real. Someone quick. asked about the TTNL hat. Like a sand band, like a sand band. A ball flock and burning his wine. Like a sand, sand, sand. There's our life. There's our we go live. We go on live right after Bears games with your boys trap talk and the smartest man alive. The Tape Never Lies Network. Oh shit! Tape never lies. Starts now. Look at that. They put that together. The social media and swag team coming together there. I gotta thank them. Yes, they're working diligently. On getting Bears Hour Live swag, keeping it a hundred swag, tape never lies, fuck a play, the walrus, four twenty Claudio, <laughs> smoke weed every day. So there's gonna be a lot of stuff. Keep yourselves posted. We'll keep you posted. We're working on hats. Shane is a big hat designer. I don't think you know that, cars. Very picky about his hats. So he's not picky. He despises everything that says bears on it in a hat. Pretty much. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> just what he does. Ela hates it. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're designing the tape never lies network. Cars is my guy. I tell all the secrets to him. Like, look what I just bought. And I'm gonna get in so much trouble. <laughs> Instead of like six pictures of hats in like a four day span, I'm like, yeah, she doesn't know. Yeah, Steph will be like, what is he telling you to buy now? It's like, what do you mean? I don't understand. <laughs> oh, Shane at one point bought all my hats. That's, that's how good he's been to me. Now I bought this hat, Shane, that I'm wearing. I don't give a fuck that he smokes weed. They all smoke weed. Smoke weed every day. Gotta do it, Claudio. The original. That's the original. I love That's that the one. Ori- That's the original. The OG <laughs> clip. That's a great clip by Alex Acevedo, also yeah. on the swag team. Yeah, he, so there you he go. apologized. Look. He's like, I, I, I'm sorry I started this. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm no. like, it's all good, dude. The fans love it. We, It's all good. It's, called, it's all about the fans. You're getting a big <laughs> following. People are waiting for your cut it out segment every week. Let me know. stop the, the lane. It, so I don't know. My bear up this week. I... I'm tempted to do something I've never done before. And so I'm going to do it. Because I wanted to go with a certain skill set in the backfield. But it's been a long time, in fact, never have I ever done this, that I would say a kicker wow. is going to be my bear up. And that... Cairo. Cairo Santos. I thought you were going to do Leno. Oh, man. Oh, no. I was, I was about to <laughs> kill I watched oh, too much this, tape to do this that. This show cars, will though. end if that, that show, ever happens. People will stop following. It would be a fraud. Oh, God. The reality is, <laughs> why is that up there? What? I put it up there. Oh, I was going to say, I didn't put yeah. it. Oh, man. That's our guy, Retro TV and Movies. Matt. Oh, he did the LOL. He did an LOL. <laughs> so it doesn't mean anything. But oh, listen, Cairo Santos, game on the line. These 50-plus yarders, he hits it. They, uh, Peyton calls timeout. Bears fans have to live through the anxiety of that for that time. Shane's already admitted he had no confidence. I don't know I if didn't. you guys I would have, yeah. Claudio, I was ready to, th- I was ready to throw I down ready. 5K on it. <laughs> Cars, were you confident in it? Yeah, actually, it's it's weird. He's been the reverse of every kicker we've had. I, it was something about the 55-yarder he hit two weeks ago or whatever, the, the long one. I was like, all right, this is the guy. We're good. <laughs> We're good. Poor Tony's guy. a big Cars fan. <laughs> sweet, sweet. You kick Cars. Listen, to hit that a second time into the wind, the, the composure, I mean – 
I haven't felt this way with a kicker since Robbie Gold. I felt good about the first one when they called the timeout. I'm like, yep, we're fucked. I just yeah. had no, I lost all my confidence there. Because well, that's what happened with Parky, right? Yeah. He hit yeah. the oh, one yeah. and you're like, ah, oh, fuck, he's missing this one. Yeah. I felt pretty good. I still had anxiety, but that's every kick. So used to being a Bears fan. But this dude has come in here and he's made... I don't even know the Pinheiro mystery at this point. It's like unsolved. It doesn't matter right now. Exactly. I, hey, yeah. the reality take is, all the time you need. Not I think we not found not our kicker. Not going to work here anymore. I think no. it's exactly yeah, what exactly. I don't think, yeah, I don't think he's, he's going to get the job back now. He's obviously so. passed the baton. It's like that yeah. story with... What was it? Mickey Mantle? Who was the one? He, Lou Gehrig. He, and he, it was uh, Lou Gehrig. And yeah. who was the Wally Pip? Wally Pip. Wally yeah, Pip. The Wally no, I think Pip story. You, I think you got to come up with a Cairo Santos song. Yeah, we're going to have to. No, 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 no. Let's let him do his thing. He doesn't need a song. Okay. Let's. Right. We don't want to. song's going to jinx him. We don't want to. Re- yeah, we don't want to jinx him. Okay. Yeah, I just we're, trying to, do- we're trying to figure out who's going to Wally Pip Claudio. <laughs> people are dming me i love claudio but i would love to do his job can i have a spot on the show well lawrence wanted to throw his his name in the ring lawrence, last week lawrence funk lawrence, was ready yeah he lawrence funk. Funk did a great job he was functified i already know what play you're talking about Nah, it's not the obvious one. Yeah, are you sure? I knew it was this play. Oh, no, no, no. oh okay. wow. What's going on, man? All right. See, Charles Leno needs help here. It's and coaching. This ball almost gets intercepted. Know your personnel. Watch Leno. It's watching Where are you my play. Unable to just simply control and maintain the protection. Watch him reach out. Now he's off balance, reaching down. Your head should never go down as an offensive tackle. See, he drips down. Oh, ushers them back. Sing the song. Seven, Seven o'clock. o'clock Every day. week we're doing the usher. Charles, uh, Matt Nagy has talked about throughout the season about self scouting and evaluating your play. How do you feel you have played through the first seven games this season? <laughs> um, thought I played so far so good. Um, still got a lot of areas to improve. Uh, I just want to continue to work on my improvement. Um, getting better each week um it's not about where i'm at right now it's about where i'm at at the end of the season so we just focus on getting better every single week man oh hell no number 72 uh, leno uh, he's, <laughs> you know, he's awful i'm so sick of all these haters like started from the bottom now we here charles leno i mentioned him being a seventh round draft pick can you sit here with a clear conscience and say that Arlington Hambright would be worse. No, God! God. No, God, please, no! 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 cars that's the greatest so self-scouting <laughs> job i'm getting I've better ever. every yeah. week <laughs> it would have been better if he was so just like counting money no, no, i've been fine <laughs> i've been all right he sounded uh, so he sounded so confident about that didn't he uh, you know uh, it's not where you're at right now didn't maybe did the check clear did the check clear yeah i've been all right i've been all right it's fine. oh my god we can't make this team oh up god. but to olin's credit it's they're five and three somehow and they continue to crush the heart and soul and that was me who made that tony so yeah you could blame me for that but we have fun here on keeping it 100 that's what we do like nobody else they can try to imitate us you gotta fucking laugh at some point there's so much shit going on in this world we don't even have a president yet. I'm not trying to get political, Claudio. But ah, it's, shit. There it's it goes. Yeah. There it goes. Good night, I, I just thought maybe we could make it put, through a wait, whole wait, show wait. before. I put people in timeout in the chat for bringing up politics. Uh, I was worried about copyright with the music, and then Phil's got so, to go and talk about it. See you. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying. It's like we... Zero point zero. 
Exactly. <laughs> They're still living in zero. Oh. So, Cairo Santos Oof. from Draft Dr. Phil. Can't believe I'm picking a kicker. That's amazing. My bear. He up. deserves it. That he is. Does. You guys don't understand how amazing that is that he picked a kicker. So, <laughs> I mean, obviously, I'm going to pick the guy that I thought you were going to pick. My bold prediction came true. Yes. I said 20 plus carries. There you go. For Montgomery. And he didn't, you know, he didn't uh, disappoint. The dude had a big run. The dude broke 20 tackles, I think, in that one game. Oh. I mean, the guy is just, I tell Phil every time, and just this dude is just so just good. Give him, every give him a rhythm, I mean, Maggie. One week. Some of, the holes, some of the holes the other team has on us, I'm sitting there like, if Montgomery has those holes, he's going for 150. He's, I mean, he's taking over the game. So, I mean, come on. This guy is I wish is I had a amazing. clip right now of how, you know, of Leno to interrupt and be like, why doesn't he have these holes? Man, I've been all right. I've been blocking okay. You know, exactly. whatever. Yeah. I mean, this guy just, he's, he's amazing. And it's a shame that he, you know, he's not getting the credit he deserves because he's not putting up the numbers. And finally, like I said, he's getting the carries. So hopefully Nagy's going to keep giving him guy? these carries. What is, you know? what is, what is this attitude right here? Like, have some fucking fun in your life, Swanky. I don't get you. Oh, that's how Swanky always, tries to get on the show. He's, he's a always, dick. he's always being you, that. We fall for it every I'm just, right. I, 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 I call out all the bullshit, guys. You, you gotta know me. Ask Claudio. Shane calls it out too. I'll give you that, Shane. But I just don't get. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> It's a big yeah. deal. There's a lot of shit. No shit. That's why we're fucking here yeah. with Olin Krutz for an hour and talking bear up, bear down, and having fun because exactly. it's Because outside of that. this, we all got fucking masks on, and we can't do nothing. So exactly. this is where we come that fucking fun. I, I guess maybe so just, what the fuck? context of his text. I don't oh, know. we're fine. We read too much in Lighten anyway. up, Jesus. Francis. That's there exactly. it is. Remember Pee Wee Herman? What would he say? <laughs> no. Francis, remember I just remember that song. I think Swanky does need a timeout. Thunder, look at Thunder Girl. She <laughs> understands it. Italian Stallion gets it. I mean, we're having fun. Claudio, yep. I gotta agree. My I'm bear, watching yeah. the tape. I fucking David Montgomery is like fucking late for his wedding at the subway and needs to weave through a fucking crowd of 500 it's Dude, just took, unbelievable i was just about to say marshawn lynch always reminded me of somebody running through a crowd like when you run through a crowd you're like going like this you're pushing a guy and and i see that in montgomery and and he could be a special player so let's let's Listen, hope it continues it took, it took me um 17 hours to cut the first tape never lies and then another four or five to condense it and I'm <laughs> well I do give a fuck You see how much he cares about me. I guess I, I hit that wrong. I do The point I was trying time. to make, as I'm watching all these runs by this poor guy, he doesn't ever get a fucking blocked play even one time appropriate. Everybody yeah. doing yeah. it together. So to appropriately assess him, <clears throat> I just... I hear what Olin was saying because of the speed and the break. That's course. just not who he is. That's but just that's, not who he is. And, and it's not who he is. It really is gonna... an indictment on the GM. I just never really put it all together in my head, but it was like, boom, it hit me like a fucking cannonball when he traded Jordan Howard out of town. Yeah. And you've got David Montgomery, who's the tackle-breaking machine. Yes, David Montgomery has better hands, but they're similar running styles. And he and, gave up extra picks to do it. And, Don't and forget. Exactly. We, this fucking GM, everything. man. The, the fucking smoking gun that's going on with him. Uh, I just get it. So, anyway, Claudio. So, yeah, so David Montgomery. He's definitely my bear up. I miss Jordan Howard as well. 
I, I miss having another running back when Olin said, well, I think you could have got Thomas him. Got you you could have got him for a conditional seventh rounder. I mean, he's been a healthy scratch in, in Miami. Jordan Howard, for some you games. mean? Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. They would never, they would never fucking bring him back. What's what's up with Lamar Miller? I mean, is I he, just think it's the ACL, man. Yeah. I don't think he's, he's still, ready he's to go. Not ready. Yeah. Well, they'll never get the, an answer for that. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's the unfortunate thing because. Because I'd rather see him back there than fucking Patterson. Really. Anybody fucking worth right. their grain of salt. If you don't subscribe to this channel, the YouTube channel, or go to the Patreon channel and really get the analysis, then you're doing it wrong because tonight was a showcase of that. Having Olin on here, really taking a yellow highlighter, Shane. I know you hate those. And just saying, <laughs> fucking tape never lies. It's a blast never. from the, the past. <laughs> exactly. So we're getting it all together tonight. I don't get how the fuck our guy, uh, Cordero Patterson's your number two back. In what world are we living in? I just don't get it. You got to get a running back in there, and, and hopefully they get to that part. But we do something, Claude. I'm just seeing if you're set up. You are. Yeah, I, I got it ready. I think I should be good. All right. It's my favorite. It's my favorite favorite weekly segment. Listen, if it isn't your favorite weekly segment, wait, wait. it should be, because every week our guy scours the internet oh, to find all. See, Claudio. The Claudio was learning. promoting. Claudio th- heard no, Car say it's no, his favorite, yeah, that's so he's I'm like, like "Oh, that, he's talking about me." <laughs> He's right. talking about me. I got the shit ready on you. Was, so. See how Claudio? <laughs> see, see, cars doesn't care about your shit. Jay. I He's know. Like, fuck, fuck them this week. I saw Claudio's <laughs> eye. Then he looked down. He's like, "Wait a minute." <laughs> Cars usually loves me, loves my <laughs> segment. That, that extra edible is setting me yeah. up. <laughs> Listen, Shane scours the internet, the Twitter sphere, to find the dumbest tweets of the week. He brings them to our attention and to your attention, and we always do it like this. Dumbest Tweets of the Week. Oh, yeah, the dumbest tweets of the week. We always do it in a special way. But I'm trying to find our... There it is. Are we in the right spots? No. So Not at all. There. You go there, and there we are. All right, let's do this. Isn't that pretty, Cars? Everybody's... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is going to be so fucking good. Cars are going to love my segment more, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Doubt it. Really doubt it. (laughs) He's the smartest man. He's as consistent as the California sun. He will always pack himself his own goddamn lunch. This guy confronts you head on, toe to toe. He's not cool with a pussy ass sucker punch. He's the smartest man. And this is his dumbest tweets of the week. A little fast on the fade out club. Uh, I know. A little fast. Getting this. He's, butcher, he's, he's butchering my segment. It's all part of his fucking grand plan. It's all a part like of his it. plan. Like it. This was a, a late uh, entry oh, to really? the uh, dumbest tweet. So it was actually one that came out today. Cars actually replied to it on Twitter. But um, yeah, right here, Cap and J Hood at oh Cap J Hood. If Mitch Trubisky is Ryan Pace's worst decision, is Khalil Mack, his second worst. I didn't oh know if it was Dan Aguire tweeting for Cap and J Hood. <laughs> I'm kidding. Someone Dan. Out of rage. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> can we just can we fucking move past this ridiculousness of people saying that Khalil Mack wasn't or isn't living up to his contract? And he's most oh times when he God. takes the field. He's the best player on the fucking field, no matter who you're playing. That's how fucking dominant and how good this guy is. Football's not a one guy wins all like Michael Jordan. This isn't basketball. 
It's not soccer where there's a Pele that could dominate. Football can't be won by one. It can't. And you can quote me on that. There's In the history of the sport, all of them, even the greatest to ever play, in my opinion, Walter Payton, couldn't do it by himself. Couldn't. And that is a problem with people like that. I don't know if it's to get clicks or attention, but it's certainly, what is that? Shock jock mentality. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, that yeah. just doesn't fly here. Like, that, yeah, I think guys, somebody somebody put it in the it. chat, and it, it's true. It's they what put shit out like that to to create chaos, to create be like they want people to see that and then respond solo, to it instantly. Solo. And yeah, Han Solo. Yeah, exactly. That's 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 the and you see oh, that's pretty much what what Twitter has turned into for to to get these different shows publicity. They'll put out some ridiculous comment, and then they'll have everybody. You, you know, see, reply to it, and that you it see some you know, of becomes shitty viral. Networks and shitty fucking podcasts and bloggers doing the same. That shit, that shit doesn't. You got to be authentic. If I could give people some advice with your shows that suck, you turn around, look in the mirror, stop doing steroids, and start studying and know what the fuck you're talking about. Right. Because real people recognize real talk. And you can take that wherever you want, and you can market the shit out of being a contrarian and have a sh you know a different opinion to try to get attention. But at some point, that shit ends in a a fucking a, a watery grave. <laughs> 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 That's what my father would would say. He's like, you you gotta be authentic. And you could see when my dad comes on, he's going to keep it 100 in his opinion. He, he's not going to, you know. I think that's a family shit. trait, Phil. I think uh, <laughs> I think subtlety is not something that genetically has been passed down. No. Uh, to yeah, we use fly know. swatters. They use hammers in the Atosian house. Yeah. To, yeah. to kill flies. I did Let say frying pans. get yeah. a hammer out and knock <laughs> Nagy in the head with getting under center. Yeah. Just get under center and start doing that anyway so we do we do uh we have a double have, we, we do have, well, actually hold on we, claudio got a little I, system I had a, yeah, we're not there yet oh, he, claudio I know, I had, had a, some technical issues yeah i had to go out and come back in so i'm getting it ready but yeah we do we do have more than one dumb tweet but we have uh part two here and then we have a uh, uh, part two of part two so this is the first part and this is going to be a a video dumbest tweet oh, really? from back in April because we are the network that holds people accountable. So I Oh, I love this. I saw I saw this and I remembered it because I saw the rebuttal to it just the other day. So I had to go back and back a little bit and, and pull this out of the archives. Oh, this is but great. this is everybody's favorite PFF on Rookie quarterback Justin Herbert before he was listen, drafted back in April. This and is the listen, unveiling yeah. of truth. Yeah, listen to what they say. I think he'll come off the board as the third quarterback. I don't think he can play. Like on, honestly, he just he can't play. He's late on every throw. Like if he throws to his first read, like oh, okay, it's fine, I guess. But he's late on every throw. I think. Um, the stat that Mike put out the other day about, you know, just looking at throws to just open receivers and he just misses them like Mike. once every five throws. I mean, that's terrible. Thanks, PFF. They usually so oh. on the money, too. It's yeah, like so if, for them. Like, if, we, wow, like. if we fast forward to present day, here's the same crew that was just ethering. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Justin Herbert live on air. Here's the same crew. Like it never happened. Breaking down Justin I'm Herbert guessing. now. After a stellar performance against the Jacksonville Jaguars in week seven, I'm ready to say 
Los Angeles Chargers quarterback Justin Herbert is having a better season than number one overall pick Joe Burrow. He right now ranks 15th in PFF passing grade. Burrow ranks 16th in PFF passing grade. And the reason is Justin Herbert is hitting the valuable throws down the football field to Guyton, to uh, Virgil Green, Keenan Allen on the back shoulder. This guy has that special arm talent needed to hit those throws 15, 20 plus yards downfield. Three quarterbacks with the most big time throws as rookies through the first seven weeks of the season, Cam Newton, Andrew Luck, and Justin Herbert. He's a special kid with special arm talent. I think sky's the limit for him. These motherfuckers. Never trust, a, never trust a guy wearing glasses giving <laughs> information on football. That's, I think, what we've really learned. In this. What I really think is that I never but said it just, any of that it stuff. It just that shows you. A lot of people, <laughs> Phil knows that I'm a guy that never forgets shit like that. Oh, and Phil be like, where the fuck did you get it? I mean, I've got a pretty good track record with that stuff. So when I went back and was looking at that, I'm just like, but this is what happens with these guys. They have the financial backing and, and all of this PF, the PFF empire. But they put all this shit out there and they're going to drag this kid. And now they're going to fucking praise him because he's fucking yeah. doing well. And people buy into the hype train. Now, Herbert has exceeded my expectations for what I had on him. But I never thought I never thought the dude was a fucking dog or anything like that. And it just shows you PFF doesn't know what the fuck they're talking about. And even, hey, every every one of us have been wrong on, on something. These guys are just fucking full steam ahead on the bullshit train. And... It, doing what they do so yeah pff go fuck yourself you're my dumbest tweet of the week beautiful what a that's that matt millerisms they they do yeah. this thing like they never said what they said i remember me and matt going at it about the guy we're playing this weekend shane i had him as my number one back and he yeah, says that he's a full fullback. Back. He's a fullback. That's it. How could you not see Ezekiel Elliott better <sighs> than him? And I'm yes, like, Swanky. I've seen your comment every week. I've also talked about it. I've had him number one. You're that's not the thing. No, you're one not breaking here. news. Yeah, I'm not. A, you're not breaking Nobody. fucking news, and you're not being sneaky. Tell no. your mother I'll see her later. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody <laughs> hides from. Everybody's gonna have mistakes, but the thing is. Does everybody own their mistakes? That's the thing. And I could speak for my boy Shane, who's you who laugh about it. Like, yeah, I don't know what the <laughs> fuck I was thinking, but you say it here. What you what yeah, you're I was seeing a, there is and I, hey, I was a hundred love the, I was a hundred percent wrong. I think he got drafted into the worst possible scenario for him. Oh yeah, in, Hugh, in, Hugh in Cleveland. Or- yeah, Hugh yeah. is always a great guy to go play for. Can't wait for his tell-all book about how it wasn't his fault at all. But I'll, yeah, I'll <laughs> wholeheartedly body. agree. I was, I was wrong, but I, I think Kaiser was a talent. I think he had a lot of the traits that I like seeing in a quarterback, but he didn't make it, and I was, I was wrong. So yeah, thank you for well, holding me accountable, Swanky. Thanks, swanky, still yeah. a chance, still a chance. Yeah, yeah. So you say there's a chance. <laughs> So hey, saying, would you be against putting him on the practice squad of Kaiser? No. no not me. Ooh. I mean, I'd take him over Mitch Trubisky. All right, I'm going to leave. I'm going to show you. <laughs> oh, here they come. <laughs> oh, that's tough. I'm saying I would not be against having that kid on no. the practice squad and see what he, he could do. I mean, yeah, but he, he doesn't, he he doesn't, have, eight, he doesn't have eight years in this offense, Phil. Oh, man. That's he did funny. have two good years of college. How many though, years so of, in the months. arena league does he have? That's yeah. what I, listen, there's I've seen this game so much. There's so much bias. There's a kid probably there, undrafted, no one's given a shot that's better than fifty percent of what's backing up. And and that's just the truth. There's bias and politics in this game. And the great GMs, which we don't have. Mm-hmm. recognize right. it doesn't matter this guy thinks he's the smartest guy because he's taking a division three fucking tight end i'm gonna show him all when really the reality is finding the talent i don't give if, even if it was a division three tight end you gotta find the talent and, and assess it appropriately to cars point you look at that first round you look at 
the promises and the lies, the drafting a quarterback every year. We don't talk about promises and line. drafting. Cars and I are Bulls fans. We that's oh, like please. a death that sentence Chandler for us. Hutchinson <laughs> is in our fucking basketball team. Anyways, all right, that's anyway. a sore subject. Anyway, now Claudio. We're going to do our positive tweets. Shane, you don't have any more negative, right? No. All All positive from here on out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Swanky's mom's going to be getting some later. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) He's the smartest man. It's, It's easy to see who's giving their all and who's not giving everything. With no accountability, visor-wearing coaches who run red zone jet sweeps. No way in hell, I'm sorry, cars, are the Bears ever gonna wear a goddamn ring. He's the smartest man, and this is his best tweet of the week. There there you go, Claude. He's getting there. He's almost gone. He hasn't totally butchered my segment, yeah, man, but he's no, he hasn't lit it on fire yet. Thanks, Claude. But uh, yeah, this is a, another two-parter. But this is going to be by so one. Oh, <laughs> what is he doing? I have no idea. Wow. <laughs> there, he, there he goes. Yeah, yeah he was there. freezing up a little bit. This is maybe a a potential GM in the future sent out this tweet, and that is Mr. Lewis Riddick. Oh, and this, does he want his job? This came out during the Bears game. When you see the same fundamental mistakes by multiple and different players within a position group, that is a coaching issue. Let me take it a step further. Either you are coaching bad fundamentals or you are allowing it to happen and not doing something to break the pattern of mistakes. Modify the methods used to coach, teach, modify the scheme to better fit the player or to replace the player. Now, everybody, well, maybe not everybody knows, but Matt Nagy and Lewis Riddick are close. And I that, I think, was a direct shot at Matt Nagy oh, and his yeah. coaching staff, 100%. I read you know, that during especially the about uh, Furry, right? Like, yeah. I don't. I know he's a really nice guy and he's very uplifting and everything. But it, outside of the line, who's let it let you down more? Allen Robinson had a bad start. Miller's had a bad kind of inconsistent year. Wims is that like, yeah, you the guys you kept aren't really doing you any favors. Is does Riley Ridley get out there this Sunday? He's oh, got God, to. No. He's, God no. He, they won't. But I. I, I agree. I need He's, a bet on this. If they if they don't, it's come on. I mean, he deserves a chance now. I mean, unless he was, maybe he snorted cut, blow off a of hooker's they, ass they at Hallis Hall. Him. I don't know, but you got to give the kid a fucking chance to get out there because he didn't he didn't disappoint in his limited reps when he was no. on the field. No. He's got the size. He's got he's got the he's got the frame. Who's Listen, we've talked about this a hundred times. I actually should have brought it up with Olin when he was talking about wanting to see more screen passes. Phil, we talk about it all the time. Slant passes. Mm-hmm. He's another guy. He's another bigger body that you can put out there. And if they if they don't give him some reps this week, when you just released Ginn, Javon Wims is not out there. He he's got to dress this weekend and play. He's got to. But to Carr's point, if they don't, it will not surprise me. I honestly will have an issue big time. I will I fucking go live. I will fucking rip this fucking head coach, this fucking scumbag wide receiver coach. If that's how you're going to fucking do people, that is, you, you can't be next man up mentality in front of a fucking mic. And I'm sorry, cars. That, I'm with Rel. That Riddick is straight at fucking Nagy. And this offense, and I saw some, I, Claudio took that, it was a good comment down. Aikman fucking destroyed Matt Nagy on air. He absolutely, and listen, this isn't like, oh fuck, can't, uh, can't comment, you guys love yourself, whatever. If, well, 
don't you love yourself? I mean, all I'm given is the fact. We've said this for years now. It's coming to fruition that everybody's now jumping. But the reality is the proof is in the fucking pudding. The tape never lies network. That's the reality. That's who we are. And that's where we stand by. And the truth has come out. I think Riddick hit it perfectly. Look at H.L. Priest. He's been on fire tonight, this dude. And I've seen some people sign up for the Patreon network tonight right in the chat. Signing up. www.claudio.thetapeneverlies. I know he keeps freezing there. We got a little bit of business. I know there's another one, but I wanted to make sure that... Here you go. TapeNeverLies.com. Right there, Claudio. Great job. Glad I did it for you. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> you got to do something on this show, Phil. You don't do I know enough. Chris, got, Chris Gonzalez is a page. Look at him. He's wearing his shirt there. Look, it's part of his... That's actually not his number. That's his height. <laughs> Four foot five. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he is small, but I have respect for small people. If you're not a member of the patronage team, the crew, the charter member, like Will Hill, number 113, he knows it now. Shane will give you your number so you fucking know it now. I'm working with this lady. I'm trying to, you know those cartoon images of us? Let me pull them up. Hold on. What the fuck is it? I'm in, I'm in the wrong segment. Here we go. We'll give you Shane's. Take that number. That comment down. See Shane's little cartoon? Waz Ram on Twitter. Follow him. That little cartoon. We're trying to get you guys an ability to get your cartoon done of yourself at a cheap, cheap price to put your, you know, patronage number that you are on that. So I'm working on that with an artist. If they don't like the number I'm giving them, then we're going to move on like. Tony Soprano to the next fucking person to do it. But I love you guys on the Patreon side. I love all of you guys in the chat. Shane, you got another great tweet? Those are my tweets of the week, Phil. Look at that. Look at that. It's fucking impressive, man. I, I, I don't give a fuck that he smokes weed. They all smoke weed. Smoke weed every day. Listen, after every Bears game, Shane and I go live. If you don't know by now and living under that rock, there was over 4,000 people watching our show this past Sunday. Hopefully you join in on Bears Hour Live after every Bears game. It's the best Chicago Bears postgame show on the planet. Bar none, it's Bears Hour Live immediately after each and every Bears game with host Shane, the smartest man, and draft Dr. Phil Otoshin every Sunday, Monday, or Thursday, immediately after Bears games. Your guys, draft Dr. Phil and Shane Marsaw are live on Bears Hour Live. Subscribe to the show via the Tape Never Lies Network, which can be found on YouTube, Facebook Live, Twitter, and Twitch. It's the best Chicago Bears postgame show on the planet, Bears Hour Live. Oh shit! Oh shit! That's right. Every Sunday, Thursday, or Monday, Shane hates those primetime games. He's up late, then he's up early delivering the mail because he's the mailman. And we will be live this Sunday after the Tennessee Titans game. We also are going to have our boy Greg Braggs. I know Cars is boy. I guess Greg is going to be at the game. He's going to jump yep. on the show with us on Bears Hour Live. Let us know. We had our boy Sony, Sonny on Heat when uh, we played the Carolina Panthers. So, Greg, if you haven't seen Greg's show, Bragg's in the stands, Shane. Bragg's in the stands, but I thought you were going to take your shot at him. <laughs> no, no, I'm trying to be nice. I'm trying to be nice to Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Greg is one of the best dudes. Follow him on Twitter and check out his show. And that's it. Hopefully, maybe we bring Cars and him to debate Foles versus Trubisky at some point this season. No, no, no. <laughs> no. 
Last bit of news before we go to everybody's favorite Italian-American segment. Listen, our guys at Chai City Sports, they sponsor this show. They support us. Steven has made some graphics for us, some of these lower thirds. Guys over there are great, great dudes. Give them a shot. Check out their show. It's called the Bear Front Podcast. Chai City Sports. Hey, it's Steven. And Nick from the Bear Front Podcast from ChaiCitySports.com. Every week, join us for in-depth Bears talk as we break down the matchups ahead of each week's game. And join us following every game for what we saw and what we wish we had seen on the Hurry Up Recap. So subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and stay tuned to ChaiCitySports.com for the latest from the Bear Front Podcast. And now, back to Keeping It 100 with Draft Dr. Phil Atoshin and Shane, the smartest man, Marsaw. Chai City Sports, Bear Front Podcast. Hey, don't forget Claudio and our resident nerd, Cars. Follow Cars at Bears Nerd and check out his writings as he breaks down in writing some thorough, in-depth analysis of the Chicago Bears. See, I don't fucking read because I have no time because I'm constantly... Thank, thanks for something. the plug there, Phil. That's, but, that's really good. Yeah, that's, no, he's got but, a video on there, Phil. But that was my butt. I could see you were that dude that stood on the side at the dances. I was giving you a butt. No, no, no. I, you danced? Wow. Are you kidding? Do you see me? Do I look like I dance? Well, I don't want to judge a book by its cover. I you mean, know you I've judge learned. this book by that cover. I mean, you 100% do that. All right, then. I guess you didn't dance at the dances. I was a dancer. I don't no, know. If you... God, no. He was too busy getting beat up by Scottie Pippen. That what store was it? Oh, really? <laughs> There's a story. Yeah, that that's yes. <laughs> Lar- Scotty and Scotty and Larsa. That's a big were man. In, it were an interesting uh, power couple. That's for sure. <laughs> Scotty and who? Is, it, is is ex or is it his ex wife oh. now? Yeah, I think okay. so. Yeah, yeah. Larsa, oh, yeah. I think her name is right. Larsa. Oh, yeah. Larsa. I thought you said Lars. I was like, Scotty Pippen is. No, no, no. no. <laughs> okay, I thought you were breaking news here. <laughs> I didn't know. But anyway, are you going to tell the this answer? Story? Is no. Our Shane and Phil allowing cars to be a Patreon member, he gets charged double. We. <laughs> charge him fourteen dollars a month yep yes. and he still doesn't especially, get to see the content yeah i still don't like i <laughs> especially after his take on naggy we had to like coach of the year matt naggy that's right Let's yeah go. the tape never lies network home of the greatest chicago bears fans on earth that's right adam rank that's what we need with olin and all of them. Adam Rank, our boy, he was checking in tonight, telling everybody what's up. He believes. Hopefully the Tennessee game, we'll see. We're going to do that soon. But right now. Well, hold gonna... on one second, dude. Oh, I'm wait, having... get... StreamYard is giving me some issues again. So I'm not uh, seeing the videos the you're putting up. Like all it's these videos the you've been putting up, I'm not seeing it. So I don't know if you're going to. I'm going to oh. see the cut it out. So let me see. It. How about can you guys? See can you see this? Oh. Smoke weed every day. You didn't see that? Oh, it literally came and all the music stopped. What came? Didn't see it. Who came? Who came? Well, the, the 420 the me, the 420 version physical, of me. But it's not. Physical. Let's get walrus physical. God, the family home videos. How'd you find those? So maybe I'll leave. You guys talk about whatever, and I'll come back, and maybe it'll be better. I don't know what to tell you because I don't think I'm going to see the video. It's the shit's just not working right now for me. Streamyard, it's streamyard. Just reboot. Plug it in. Yeah, and unplug it. Try. Yeah, I'll just restart it. Yeah, Yeah. restart everything. All right. We'll manage without. See what happens when you sabotage my my segment. Yeah, <laughs> see you sabotage mine worse. Listen, my <laughs> night started out the same way with the streamyard stuff. It gets you frustrated because 
cars. I ended up paying a lot of money to updo the memory and did this on a brand new computer and it still was given problems earlier. Have I done it again tonight, Jane? Mm -mm. No. no. Early you did, you were in and out, but it's been it's been good. No, like in the Olin interview, everything no. was good. Perfect. Yeah, everything was good. You, you were you dragged down a little bit a couple times, but <laughs> You know. Well, yeah, that's not a computer problem. That's just a week by week. Oh, issue. right, yeah. right, right, right. Listen. Just keep. I love Listen. you, but just keep it at a hundred, Phil. Just keep it at a hundred. Oh, hey, <laughs> those are my favorite comments at YouTube. Hey, I fucking love you guys, but real quick, your fucking promos suck, dick. Yo, <laughs> listen. If you could just cut that down by eleven and a half seconds, it'd be fucking so dope. If you could clean it up and post, yeah. that would be even yeah. better. Yeah, <laughs> I love the the criticisms. They're like, listen, the rant. You gotta not do the rant. Like, shut the fuck up. Just please. It's like Shane had a great line. It's like. You can't please any anybody or everybody. It's mm -mm. the reality. It's like it being was, married. <laughs> it was like the best it's line so was true. Jesus <laughs> came down, he gave he gave everybody ham. And <laughs> people got ham and then they're like, Where's the fucking bread? <laughs> Where's the fucking bread? Right. Where's the fucking bread? Oh, and you're not gonna do this podcast for free? <laughs> you think you're mean? fucking Netflix? Oh wait, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I don't think you should be swearing on your show, dude. It's not like come there's, on. There's children up at one a.m. watching your show, asshole. You shouldn't swear. Exactly. It's okay. like you can't. I can't make Here, it up, cars. Show Timmy this. It was That's almost right. perfect timing with Claudio's return. It almost came right on the return. That's what she Matt, said. Please don't say that again. <laughs> please don't ever say that again. You got video, Claude? Well, play a quick video so I can see if it works. Hold on. Shy City Sports. Good. Okay. Right. We didn't play a video yet, though. You just saw something? Well, that's weird. That is weird. Well, that should be fun. That's Boy, that LSD finally yeah. just kicked in. This will be great. So the story goes, this guy, we gave him a job. He was shocked when we called him. It was actually my wife was like, why don't you? And I go, holy fuck. Shane was mentioning Claudio too. And Claudio was like my brother. So I'm like, I didn't even think of Claudio. Claudio's like the maybe well, someday, maybe someday I'll even meet Shane. He says <laughs> after <laughs> after we days? ate dinner together one night for like six hours at the same fucking table. <laughs> that was great. Uh, that's funny. So then Claudio came to life because we were thinking of doing a fantasy football show, and that's where we were going to bring Claudio in because of his years of running leagues and his expertise there. Which, by the way, we're going to do a fantasy football show. We're getting that production yeah. together. So that's going to be fun. We got our cast and crew ready to go. But anyway, Claudio then comes up with an idea as he's stretching his legs on his first show. He's fucking nervous. I ain't doing it. No fucking way. <laughs> yeah. Shane almost broke and gave it to him. Like, yeah, Phil, let him. Give go, him one what week. The fuck? No fucking way. I produced this open. It's going to be great if he fucks up. It's even Fuck funnier. Fuck it, we're doing it live. <laughs> we're yeah. doing it live. So this Bill now has become America's favorite, of Chicago Bear America's favorite <laughs> segment. And here on Keeping It 100, cut it out. Hey, cut it out. What are you talking about? There you go. With Claudio... The Barber! Hey, you, you gotta let me talk, Phil! Hey, you gotta let me speak! Claudio is gonna be bringing a new sense to keeping it a hundred. It's cut it out! 
with Claudio on the Tape Never Lies Network. Oh, yeah. That's Cut right. it out. Cut it Look, out. He's got the scissors. Got the scissors. Let's and isolate you on know what? you. Last week, I'm going to try to top it. I'm going to try to go. top the walrus from last week. I know the walrus. <laughs> you came, want me to came and... What's up? You want me to run it, Phil? There you go. Yeah. Okay, I'll you do it. Do it. You could do it. You've got so this thing. I want to... All right, All right. So, so put him up. Put video. him up there. Right, I nice still on. He's good. Yep. He's frozen. He is frozen. frozen. Oh. Perfect timing. That's what. I smoke weed every day. Actually, can you put him up there? It's pretty sweet. I could get a picture hold of that. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> I was just trying. What he fucking removed himself. No. Oh, that fucker. motherfucker. <laughs> Cocksucker. So guys, crazy weather we've listen, been having. Yeah. I listen. Mean, <laughs> there every he is. one Boy, of those stream people, yard. I gotta love stream yard. Every uh, every yeah. one of those people in the open is uh, a he's Patreon. Froze again. He's a. They're all Patreon and Patreon members. Uh, now he's dark. All right. Because <laughs> he's living in a material world, oh, and Lord. Claude is. Hey, listen. <laughs> I have an idea. You need to do LL Cool J knock you out for Javon Wims. That I think oh. we've got to find that. Oh, you didn't see the open tonight. I did a little bit. While we wait for Claudio, let's replay the open tonight. That'll be a little fun. All right? Awesome. Okay. All right, because you didn't get to see it. Where is it? Here we go. The following show is for mature audiences only there's no fast forward button shy city sports and people i wish i could to get to take so what are you saying i'm saying that the spit could not have come from behind <laughs> there had to have been a second spitter I did not see it. I totally missed it. I was looking down when I heard about it. <laughs> He's looking down. <laughs> That's the problem. That's, there it is, coach. He's uh, looking at his card for the next play. Uh, Just in general, it seemed like discipline was maybe an issue throughout this game and some unforced errors. Do, do, do you agree with that? And can you pinpoint why that continues to be an issue? Yeah, no, you're you're exactly right. You're right. There is there is issues there. That that's what bothers me, and that's what pisses me off. Yeah, I think the Bears need to go back to Mitchell Trubisky. We oh! this is what one Rex. They got a great defense, right? Yes. What if you're the coach? What's the number one thing you would tell the quarterback not to do? Turn the ball over. Period. So then, Protect since the he's come in in that Atlanta game, he's thrown for five touchdowns and seven picks. Like whims. Hopefully, he learns from this. But there has to be accountability. Just like you see Jimmy Graham. We, I'm calling him. I've been the big Jimmy Graham supporter. What he showed out there today was bullshit. I think Matt Nagy gets paid to make these difficult decisions. And this isn't working. Like, this isn't, this isn't right. And on the other side, like, I disagree with Dan. I was kind of hard on the skilled players of the Chicago Bears, too. But Allen Robinson can go. No and this youngster yeah. from Tulane right down the street, Darnell Mooney, he can go. And so if you have a quarterback who understands that and you have an a offensive coordinator, you're talking about geniuses, uh, Rex. They say that Matt Nagy's a true genius. Big plays are nice. They're good. I mean, he was birthed under Andy Reid. Well, I can't tell because you're only scoring 17 points a game. Who's the leader on offense and what do we get? Hmm. Exactly. You're in year three under this head coach, and you don't know who the leader of this offense is? Just like Steve Edwards said, that's a fucking big problem. Just a, I can't believe it. I don't see any rhythm. I don't see any rhyme or reason. You know, a lot of coaches like to have 15 plays that they go into. That'd be a change for him. Just yeah. do something different for crying out loud. This is a disgrace. How ridiculous. <laughs> Those linemen are terrible. So now you bring in Mr. Trubisky and you scrap what you've learned. You scrap what you know. You take your ego and your pride out of it and you build your offense so Mitchell Trubisky can succeed. So your offense can move. And if you don't do that, you're going to waste this great defense. You're going to waste your window and you'll be looking for a new quarterback in the offseason or at least the organization will. And they may be looking for a new head coach. Too. I told everybody Nick Foles is not a starting quarterback in the league. You said Anybody it. that would listen. 
He's not a starting quarterback. He's an excellent backup. Put him in a backup role. You benched the kid when he was three and old. He was actually right, two and old. By the way, yep. this organization, right. they're brilliant also. They passed on, we all know it, Deshaun Watson and Patrick Mahomes. You traded up to get this kid. Why? Because he is an athlete. Yeah. All right. He has a chance. And instead, you just throw him out with the bath with the bathwater for Nick Foles. Who is it's a disaster right there. The kid's a great backup. Jeff Hossettler was a great backup. Right. Was he a great starter? Hell no. So to me, you made the mistake here. Do you have the guts, Nagy, to do it? Because if not, I hope they. And, and I hope something play, happens. If they don't play. like what we do, then there's lots of other places for you guys to follow. This Bears team is fucking terrible. How do you handle internal discipline versus sort of also waiting for potential league discipline? Yeah, I really don't know that answer yet. You know, we'll, we'll get through that and figure out how that works. I, I haven't been through that before, so it's kind of new to me. So we'll just wait and see where that's at and, and uh, collaborate together as an organization and figure out uh, what's next. Grow some balls. Jesus. Grow some balls. Grow some balls. Man, yeah, look at that. Did you have fun with that, Cars? I'm sure Rex Ryan saw pictures of Mitch's feet <laughs> and was really excited about his potential. It's so funny so how I they think sweat. That factored in quite yeah, a bit. Get this motherfucker out. He's a bust now. Don't worry. Oh, I mean, Orlowski was brutal. In the beginning part of the season, he's like, Mitch, Mitch, Mitch. And then midway through that Atlanta game, he's yeah. like, oh, you got to yank him. He's terrible. He's not a starter. And now he's like, oh, no, he's the end. Like, go run out of an end zone in Detroit again. Motherfucker. I hate Orlowski's <laughs> flip-flopping on that shit. It's from Connecticut. You can never trust anybody from there. We did oh, God, beat Orlowski uh, cars. My I met him. He's a good guy. I he is a good, he's a good dude. Oh, shit. Audio, sure. is he ready? Are you no. Uh, I don't know. He's, he's still... a little slow-mo, but we'll try it. We, we'll play the... Yeah. We'll, we'll give play you it. And Claude, you got your audio? Try talking. So, as long as you got your audio. The stream yard better... Man up because this shit is yeah, this no, is not, it's not happening. It's the most frustrating thing. You ready, Claude? We're gonna try it. See what happens. Uh, try it, Claude. One, two, three. I'm talking. I'm talking right now. Oh. Yeah, well, that sucked. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't see the video. No, nope, nope, that was the perfect the breakdown of that play. It's though. Not. <laughs> All right, so. Phil's gonna Phil's gonna Dude, pinch hit for Claudio. Okay, what I haven't do. even seen these clips yet. Well, yeah, you, you don't need to see a clip, Phil. All right, You've let got me try. Yeah, you're, you'll yeah. find. Right. Ready? I'm pinching. Here we go, a little Claudio. Cut here it out. My quarterback here. All right, read option. Here goes Mitch diving no. down. I don't see nothing. Their backup quarterback. Be you, be someone else. Be someone else. <laughs> the point is that Nagy hey, is trying awesome. to be like. <laughs> <laughs> How does this? Yeah, exactly, Claudio. That's what I thought. <laughs> what you just said was perfect. Can you hear me? Can you hear me right now? Yes. <laughs> no, you can't. We can it's hear you. Bit. Yeah. Did you? He yeah, reset I'm a, I'm his a whole delay. thing. Big delay. Oh. I said, yeah. So. This is everyone. Don't even do the last one. Don't even. Don't even do the second one. I'll do it another. Tell yeah, put it on Patreon or something. Right. Yeah, we can do that. So. You voice it over. Because yeah. it's going to be good. It it's going to be good. It, that one would have been yeah. good, too. But what So what do? was the premise of that? The was premise was Matt, Matt, Matt Nagy needs to be yeah. himself, not be like Sean Payton and use our backup or quarterback as a, uh, you know, we don't do that. We never do that. That's taste, They do that with Taysom Hill, and it works. So... You know what I mean? He's trying to be like somebody else. He's trying to bite off somebody else. So cut it out. That's what that's what my point was. Okay. All right. Son of a that right. fucking so, bootleg but, internet. The He's next right. one we'll we'll do. Christian. Hold up, I'm texting <laughs> Funk right now. <laughs> Dude, listen, you you guys yeah. said it just it's streamyard. You had a bro. good you, you, you had you a good run. <laughs> You and Phil and I, like, welcome to your suspension. It ain't just me. I'll send you the kit. Try the, Phil, look like, Phil look 
a Minecraft character at the start of the show. <laughs> his audio <laughs> was never bad. Take a picture, bad. please. No. Like, oh, oh, shit. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm going to leave my phone on we camera. We all could have went like this. That I better been get out of here. <laughs> 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 It would have been a new t-shirt by Acevedo. <laughs> we better pray to the god of skinny punks. You could get him in the, with his arms like that and then somehow make the image all jumbled and frozen and be a best-selling t-shirt. <laughs> right, I think. Well, oh, so, very so we're, we're, hey, try gonna... going into your uh, cam mic and yeah. put your video down to 480p. And see if that less, you know, HD will help your system run correctly. Gotcha. All right. Let's see. Because we tried all. We reset it. Uh, retro. Right. Someone said control, alt, delete. Try that. All right. I, I went down to 480p. So. All right. Remove play, play yourself now. Okay. Remove yourself. Then come back. Yep. It's always fun when the listeners get to watch us do yes. tech support live. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> well, is it plugged in? We're definitely you... going to leave a message for StreamYard because it's someone take a picture. Is It's not Claudio's internet. No, it's definitely not. All right. Now you're moving and talking. So I'm let's talking, try moving to do it right on away, time. Shane. Yep. So we're gonna so do a you're you're <laughs> delayed a little bit. Yeah, I'm he's delayed, delayed still. Yeah. Oh, you're delayed like yeah. action parks. Fucking. Yeah, this sucks. <laughs> sucks. Uh, I had a, you didn't I, cut I, your we'll fucking Ethernet cable with those big fucking scissors, did you? <laughs> no. no. It's, Can you wa hardwire into tough. the new owner's uh, internet? No. No. No, it's just Wi Fi. All right. Well. Well. So let's. We have a segment here on the bottom of the screen, do, rolling man? across. We'll, we can. We'll we just go. have to put it up. We'll just. We'll have to put it up. You're gonna have to voice it over and send it to Shane. Yeah. There we go. We'll do Hector's that. Hector's got it right. Close the Pornhub tab. Thanks. That's <laughs> yeah, my exactly. Pornhub <laughs> statement. Get that in, and uh, we're good to go. <laughs> Tony, unplug. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> No, why did Audio I not think of that? <laughs> oh my. All right, our uh, next okay. segment. We're still waiting to produce the open for this. And I got a bone to pick. Uh, I send you guys a message. You guys live for the rant. I'm asking you to do a rant. Send it to me immediately after the Bears games. Just send a DM. I'll put it up and get it. Ready for the open. We only got that one kid who sent me a DM there. So I know our guy, my, my man Funk, Funk Jones. I don't know if yeah. he's in the chat tonight. I know he's going to be ready this week. I told him right after the game, send me your rant, your emotional moment. Somebody step the fuck up. <laughs> do it. If you're a patron, do it. If you're not, Give me some passion. Every, everyone talks about it in DMs. I want to come on with you guys. I'm, I got hype. Just send me a video of that. I got to scout you. I got to see your tape. See if it lies, Cars. We'll I think we got to do it American Idol style, right? Yeah. Four judges. Yeah. We need to, yeah. yeah, we need to weed out some of these. I don't give a fuck that he smokes weed. They all smoke weed. Smoke weed every day. Fuck. Tell I them said, where they send the DMs, weed. Phil. I said weed. It all at, goes down in the DMs. At Phil underscore Toshin. You could send it there or DM me on Facebook. If you send me a message and you're not following, I'm going to answer you. I promise. I get a lot of Yeah, you DMs. can send them to me too and I'll make sure that Phil gets them. Yeah, you could send it to Shane. Uh, at okay. Wazram on Twitter if you're on Twitter. <laughs> Phil, send a DM to where? I don't have any social media. Well, check your mailbox tomorrow, Retro. We'll, <laughs> we'll do it by smoke signal. It'll be fine. Yeah. I've gotten DMs from people with passion. So just send me a DM. Facebook, Phil Otoshin. You can see it on my name here. Let's O-T-T-O-C-H-I-A-N. There he is, the funkster. There he is. He's going to be ready. If you want to see passion, this dude brings it. I need Sh Cherie 
brought some passion. Will Hill is the guy. Cut it out. Did Cars just give her a, no, a new nickname? Oh shit, Cherie. Oh shit, Cherie. <laughs> yeah, oh shit, Cherie. We forgot your the predictions. Oh shit, Cherie. We forgot. Yeah. It is this. Cherie's yeah. segment, and we're it still is. producing it. I need to get a song open. Um, we're gonna do it though. I'm gonna get to it, Cherie. This week, next week, I'm taking a break tomorrow from anything that has to do with cutting or doing. Oh anything. my God, I know One I day. am too. Yeah, One there's, day. There's not going to be any surprise show tomorrow, I promise you. Yeah, I just, I'm taking one day off, clear my head, Friday I'm back. I probably will end up picking up my phone and making a song, but I'm giving myself. I love you, Funkster Jones. Steve, Steven Nageshi, he is on Patreon. Uh, he's dying to be on the show, right Got to bring that funk. You're going to be dying a little bit longer because you ain't coming on tonight, bro. <laughs> <laughs> not, tonight, not tonight, but hit us BHL. Up on, sit a, hit us up on he's BHL, already, Steven. He's, already, he's coming on yeah. BHL. I'm get gonna him get, on. We're going to do a whole show with patron only. We are. Yep. We're definitely five minutes each. We're going to have well, Claudio do the timer if his fucking Wi-Fi works. We are at 414 right now. Phil and I have agreed when we, when we get to 500, whoever number 500 is going to be, you get to... You, you get, get to, to pick. Choose. You can come on Keep It 100. You can come on BHL. For the whole show. Yeah, for the entire show. You get to come on. We'll let you uh, do Claudio's segment in case he like, lags <laughs> out. You know, anything. <laughs> you can take over for Claudio. For the You're going to cut time. him out is what's going to happen. That's, that's, that's oh, for sure. Poor Claudio. He's such a team player. Anyway, <laughs> let's start it off with the resident nerd. Give me that nerd alert. It's becoming a... Not a lot. There you go. Cars, your prediction for the game and your bold prediction. All of us picked the Bears to lose last week against the Saints. We all were correct. So here we go again. Yeah. <laughs> That's fucked up. <laughs> <He's left laughs> me. You motherfuckers. They um... DM me right there. <laughs> so I don't have a good feel for this, especially since they just lost to Cincy, even though Cincy had all five uh, backup linemen. I think Tennessee is a bit of a fraud team, though. I don't think that they're uh, – they're, they're, you don't have to worry about the receivers. You have to worry about one guy. Um, but I just, I just don't feel good. So I have, I have us losing 20 to 17. Uh, my, yeah, I don't, I, I, again, I think Tennessee is just the same kind of level of fraud as we are. Um, my bold prediction, uh, Riley Ridley will get nine offensive snaps, Shane. That is bold. Hey, it's as better than, it's better than zero. It's better than zero. Nine offensive snaps is going to be, no, I think, I think for me, the, uh, the biggest one is going to be Mooney is going to be the guy getting a hundred yards receiving this week. I love it. I love it. Mooney over a hundred, and you're doing two. Huh? I was joking about the oh. Riley Ridley nine oh, steps. Oh, you're joking. There's no was, way he's getting that much. Um, I, was, I was totally taking you seriously. <laughs> like, dang, going for it. Make it into existence. Maybe it'll work. Claudio, before you're... Are you, am I on delay, up? or you guys hear me good? You got you. We got you. Good. All right. You Real did. quick, bold prediction. Montgomery, over 100 yards. I don't know about 20 carries, but over 100 yards. And you know what, dude? You're really the only thing consistent. The only thing consistent is, is inconsistency in the NFL. So we had a big loss. I think we're going to get a big win. We're going to win this game 20-17. to 17. Oh, Who the, the opposite way. Yes. Cars yes. went. Oh, the I, didn't other hear, way. I didn't even hear his. his uh, yeah, you don't listen to me. It's okay. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody here does. It's but fine. Let's go. go let's go. Because you know what? We, we could have won that game, like I said, in the open. And we can win. We, obviously, Derrick Henry is the issue. We have to stop him at all costs. But I think we could pull it out. Well, your internet is at its best. It's been all night. It is. You're, you're not your internet because Fuck that's not stream yard. It's stream exactly. yard. It's fucking stream It yard. really is a stream yard issue. Yeah. Um, hopefully we can get this patched up. Um, 
I'm going to go next, Shane. Um, my pre bold prediction is the Chicago Bears are going to hold Derrick Henry under 80 yards rushing. The Chicago Bears are going to hold Derrick Henry under 80 yards rushing. And they are going to win this football game because they did such a thing. And they will win, let's see, 17 to 10. Chicago Bears, one defensive touchdown by the Bears defense and a touchdown. Who gets it? Uh, I'm going to say it's going to be, that's a great question. Brent Urban, go go crazy for no, this one. No, I, just I, go I, I crazy. He's going with Gibson. I'm gonna He's thinking go, Gibson. No, I'm going Kyle Fuller. Kyle uh, Fuller is right, going like to get it. Kyle Fuller is due. He's due for a pick, especially against this dude. Oh my God, his wife will fuck. There it is. There yeah. it is. Hey. <laughs> wife will drink a whole cup. Oh. Hey. <laughs> it froze. He had it such sounded a good, like a god. He had such a good point to make too. You know, it was almost going to be like it was a pretty good one, and then <laughs> like it just light so from the heavens was just going to open up and shine down upon this moment. <laughs> oh yeah, my Lord. bring the. <laughs> it's one hundred crew hot takes. You gotta have that, Claudio. Shane Marsaw. So I am picking a score of. 26 to 15 Tennessee Titans are going to win oh. and my bold prediction is Cairo Santos kicks five field goals so wait I'm doing math that that's is 15 correct. points that is the yeah. correct yeah. math I was just <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'll handle that, that part of the show, Phil. That's a Syracuse that. education coming out, Phil. <laughs> I, I can count. I was doing the math. There you go. Claudio's back. Uh, let's try it for the fiftieth time. Yeah, we try. It might it be the Rex. Gro take the Rex Grossman jersey <laughs> down. Yeah, that might help. I that think might give be you it. something. I'm already rearranging his whole background for him. I think my background's good. Somebody was asking me about my neon. My I neon. like the. Someone like asked me about the, the neon. I think the flag that I bought you just needs to replace that banner next to the Gerlacher. That one, yeah, <laughs> that it. up there. Get that out of there. Put the flag like this one. Are you talking about the this one right here? Yeah, that. Get that, that out of there. That's old school, bro. That's that's vintage. Yeah, it was vintage <laughs> on the ground too. <laughs> 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 that's that's Neil Anderson days right there. That's Neil, Neil Anderson. Anderson days. Do you remember right, what college Hector, you, gotta, you went to? You got to throw up no. Hector's comment because he right now Hector oh. wins the evening. Hector. Oh, Hector has a comment. I can't oh yeah, see. that's the win of the Phil's evening. Math is. <laughs> <laughs> Hector. Uh, nice. That's terrible a double, at a geography win. and math. Everything else I could do. That's the win things. right there. Yes. The bad part about it is Phil's like, wait, I'm trying and I'm like, fuck, did I add that wrong? He <laughs> threw me off. He threw me off for a second. I was just joking in that. But it worked. I'll take the blunt of the joke there. But yes. Everybody predicted Claudio with all your troubles. I guess you can't bring up a B or anything. So no, definitely. am I gonna have to do it for us? Yeah. Let me see if I can find a B. For our shout out segments. Oh man. 1700 commercials. You guys can talk. All right. Let's the Industrial Revolution was screen. neither industrial nor revolution. Let's discuss. <laughs> Here we go. We are all now stupider <laughs> after hearing. There we go. I love how it shares it on the big screen. Can you guys hear it? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes. There Definitely we go. Not. All right. Shout outs. Get our Spencer Strong. Hash it up. Spencer Strong, our guy, Ryan Cox, also a Patreon subscriber, refuses any freebies, supporting his boys. We love you and your family. Can't Let's be honest. We haven't offered him anything for free. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> gotta sell that shit higher than you are right Listen, now. Listen, trying to keep it a hundred, like right up there on the top of the screen. Keep it a hundred. Cars, do you have any shout outs? Well, I mean, I always have to shout out my son, Dustin. Uh, I hope he's doing well. Uh, no, but other than that, uh, no, I, I have not been active, so I have no idea what's going on in the world. So, no, I'm good. Yeah, no politics, please. No politics, no. <laughs> Should we tell Robo that Mitch is probably not going to be coming in the second half? <laughs> <laughs> Robo, the... Mitch Trubisky is injured, so he is going to be out. There's my guy, Josh E. I don't know. Coach Nagy didn't give an update on Mitch's, you know, return or how bad it was. It was kind of... Yeah, they're talking. I mean, NFL Network guys are talking structural damage, so that doesn't sound... I mean, I I think it's highly unlikely he's doing anything this week. Yeah, it's done. Yeah. It's done probably for the season. Yeah, I think so too. Well, Chris Gonzalez thinks he's played they... through injuries before, Shane. Will he do it again? Well, no, because he's back backup Tyler quarterback. Br- Tyler Bray is your backup this week? Is that what we're thinking? Yeah, yeah and the Bears have brought in a couple of guys that they're working out. S- Kyle, Kyle Sloter. Sloter, and then the other one was with Ruddick. Or... Yeah. How Wasn't he an Iowa it? quarterback, Ruddick? So I think so. I, he was Wasn't with he Detroit. What, wasn't he with Detroit at one point? I think Ruddick? So, yeah. I don't remember. Sloter, I remember with Minnesota and Detroit, yeah. but I don't remember. Sloter played all. at Colorado State. Like he transferred there. I remember yeah, it's reading. Jake Ruddick, right? Ruddick. I think he played at Iowa. Where's our chat room? Our chat room GMs aren't helping us tonight. Well, Claudio's not on screen, so they've all yeah. <laughs> He was Iowa and Michigan. Iowa and Michigan. That's yeah. right. Oh, boy. I yeah, would be excited about Jim Harbaugh as our coach, but that's next week's show. I mean, He'd fit he in perfect because he doesn't like to bring in quarterbacks. Yeah, <laughs> and can't figure out the quarterback position in out. Michigan either. Oh my god! I haven't get, I haven't had. Yeah, the Miami Dolphins did draft. He, the Bears were interested him in him in the draft late rounds, and Miami took him in the sixth round. Or uh, sorry, Ruddick. Detroit did. Yeah. Ruddick, yeah, that's amazing. It's yeah, like I the love... new GM, the Cowboys, right? That's yeah. The well, one. Oh thank God. God they took him. <laughs> Jesus. Ooh. Jesus. They're pulling him already. Who's oh, that? Yeah. The uh, Cowboys. Cowboys. The Cowboys are pulling that kid already, right? Yeah. Yep. Well, that's what it's like being a Cowboys fan. For us in the shout-out segments, Cars, Claudio's back somewhere in the back alley of some whole bunk town. And I just picture him being like, what do you mean PC load letter and just beating the shit out of a printer somewhere? That's all I see. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. Oh, boy. Poor Claudio. He's going to say all sorts of mean things to his router when he gets offline here. (laughs) Here's this cartoon above you. (laughs) Let's just keep that up in case he leaves again. (laughs) There it is. So he's a part of the show. The the moderator. Cars, we got this sexy, seductive jazz beat for your shout-outs. Who do you got? I already went. You don't even, it? That was it. Phil's not paying even, attention at all. Never listen to me. I thought you had more than Dustin Reagan. I thought no, I, I only shout out my son. <laughs> uh, week in, week out, we've we've been through some things. So no, I think that's all right. That's it. Claudio, Claudio, Bueller, <laughs> Kenneth with the Mister Positivity comment tonight. <laughs> well, Kenneth, there's a chance. Shane, do you have any shout outs tonight? I really don't, Phil. No? no Nothing? I'm not going to shout anybody out tonight. Shout Jeez. you guys out. We're kicking ass here at the Tape Never Lies Network, getting bigger and bigger every week. This slow, steady growth is exactly what we want. We want to push up to that 500 mark in, in Patreon yes. so we can have on our uh, special guest. So. If you are listening and you haven't subscribed yet, 
for seven bucks a month, you're gonna get expanded coverage of everything. You're gonna get the pop-up shows, halftime reports, BHL, keep it in 100. You're gonna get the extended version of The Tape Never Lies. You're gonna get a coach's clinic with Phil and his dad. You're gonna get so, so many things, all of our off-season stuff. Yeah, you're gonna get personal Zoom calls, everything. Q and Phil and might I are be doing a Q and A this weekend. Phil and I are talking about maybe something with college football, where we can hook up here on Streamyard and do some college football, and we can talk about guys that you should watch and concentrate that might fit what Chicago is doing. You, you sure know, you want to draft, share so. all this? Because I know other networks. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Well, they can't do it like we do it. There you go. That's so, but do. for seven bucks a month, if seven. you go over to. If you go over to uh, tapeneverlies.com, you can sign up for $7 a month. If you do it before December 31st, you're going to be locked into that $7 a month uh, price point for life. No matter how much more we expand, you will never move beyond that $7 a month charge. And if you sign up after that, there will be, maybe in time, there will be a, a price increase. So. I jumped in on Sirius way back in the day in 2006 at four. You paid 400 bucks up front, and I've never gotten a bill sent. So that's it's kind of the way that we look at it. So shout out to the new patrons this week. Shout out to the hundred crew in the comments tonight. Let's uh, get some positivity going here. Let's let's go to Nashville. Phil, one thing we can talk about: we were supposed to be there. I was supposed to fly to Nashville this morning. Yep. Everybody was going to the Bears Titans game to, to hang out for the week and enjoy the game on Sunday. Obviously, COVID took over our country, the world, and changed a lot of things for all of us. Cars, I know your kids' school and my, my kids' school is shut down right now. It's it's uh, not going away anytime soon. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, we were supposed to be there, and I think it would have been a whole bunch of fun for a lot of people because I think we would have I think we would have tore up Nashville that's for sure I totally agree I wish I was there chilling with all you fans breaking it down talking yep. tailgate and having fun Cherie said I could even stay in her room so <laughs> well that would be interesting I don't yeah. know how uh she wanted to book Eli the stamps handle that a little Marsaw sandwich never hurt anybody. <laughs> I don't even know where to go with this thing. <laughs> I'm so uncomfortable. Let me do my <laughs> shout outs here. I got to shout out all the new patronage. Patreons. That's, I always say patrons or is it Patreons? Patrons. Whatever, whatever yeah. you want. Well, I'm I trying to learn it. Uh, all of you guys in the chat Bullets, Jackal, Mike D, Avon, Will Hill. My boy, uh, what was his name earlier? Fuck, Retro, Tony, Sal Salamonsky, Salamonsky. <laughs> Kenneth Johnson, Evan Wells. I see you guys. My boy, the Funkster Jones, Dan Kelly, Josh E, Cherie, obviously. Um, even Robel and HL Priest. H.L. Priest was hype tonight. Heisenberg. Steven Nageshi. That's it. Steven Nageshi. He's reaching out to me. He wants to get on the show. Jose Delgado. Uh, Shane, we got such a wonderful message. I didn't ask if I could read it, but I will say it was very heartfelt to me and you from one Kino Cappuccino. Yeah, we did. That was great. Just very touching very honest very thorough and really the emphasis on thank god we moved to this network and and really i truly appreciate that she's a patreon for life uh a lot of the patreons shane tonight chuck and lydia jose delgado thomas adams justin smallwood brennan wesley gina carlson she was live on BHL, and Gina was so excited because of her, you know, getting... Like, we don't discriminate here. I don't fucking care, like I said, if you have a blue check mark or you're a guy or a girl. You talk football, and you bring your truth. There's no discriminating against that. 
and and Gina is now a Patreon. Gina Carlson, she is so excited about it. And her and her father, I believe, are new members, and we're excited that you're a part of the family. Adrian Hernandez, big fan. Cornelius Squall, Dalton Anderson, Dave Hallis. How about that name? Caleb Steck, Terry Tracy. I've already shouted out the Funkster, but he's there in Patreon. Astro Rock, Michael Williams, Claudio Abreu from Canada. My boy Eric Thomas. He is a new uh, Patreon. Jay Davis, David Arai, Pat McShay, Mike Pepler, Danny Anye, Bob Ventura, Alex Thaler, Anthony Serrano, Robbie Perez, Matthew Clark, Phil F. K. Wilson. You guys have been tremendous. Uh, Thomas Adams and 26. Jody Lee Carlson Clawson, sorry. Nathan Matt Byer, Jason Eng, number 312. Shane 312. Where's my nice. boy Eric Curry? Megan. Uh, Edgar Mendez, George Hordcraft, Connor Purton, Pertain. He's in Rhode Island. I go, you got to come to Connecticut. Me and Claudia will take you to the pizza place. Captain Alba, Daniel Suela, and my boy Isaac Nieves. I got to shout all those new Patreons and beginning patrons. I, I want to know who the first one was to sign up, Shane. That would be dope. We never... The very it. first one I can tell you in about two seconds. Do that. Let's shout out that person. The first one to believe in our network. I could tell you it wasn't Robert Schmitz. I could tell <laughs> <laughs> Where is a beat? Can I get it? Here's Claudio's beat. Let's do it for Claudio. Here you go. All right. Well, it doesn't have an actual name on here, but it uh, goes by Enigmas. Enigmas, you were the first one in there. I want to shout out my boys on Instagram, football with Coach Eric, my boy Quentin Botha, Jeff Roth, Brett Selms from Australia, Jack, who came on BHL. Obviously, I already shouted out Bullets. Linebacker coach Ryan Billings. Love that dude. Him and his dad, Jay Billings. How about Miles Schwartz? And Zach Bradley, one of the first. Laughing Ace, Cast 34545. Five. How about my boy, uh, F? I can't even read that name. Uh, last one. Last one. Uh, where are you? There you are. Mono Nola the Survivor. This guy's always shouting us out on Instagram, on the gram. AJ Smith, I see you in the, the chat. The Factor One. You guys have been tremendous to us. What a night. And I can't, I would be remiss if I didn't shout out the legend tonight that came on with us, Olin Krutz. How awesome was he giving us his time, an hour of his time, and really breaking it down. So you guys have been tremendous tonight. We were gonna we we're gonna be live at halftime of Patreon only. We go live, we discuss what happened in the first half, and then I mock rant a talk to the fucking team. If you haven't seen that, you should get in there because I get fired up if you like the rants you're gonna like that and then obviously after the game bhl we're gonna tr try to do something special this weekend and play around with this this thing hope maybe we go a little q a for patreon so get over there subscribe 43 minutes of analysis there on the tape never lies the tape never lies did come out today Get over there and check it out um, as I'm stalling to find the ender here. Jesus. I need my glasses, cars. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Air barrel, man. <laughs> there it is. I found the ender. 
Anybody have a last words? Claudio, you okay? I don't know. Can you hear me? <laughs> we can hear you, we but can. we can't, can't see, see me. Yeah, no. shout outs, Claude. Uh, I'll do. Well, I did one have a few shout out. One go shout ahead. out. No, right. go well. ahead. Go a couple, Funk. All right, listen. <laughs> <laughs> I had a few guys in the in the chat that I wanted to. <laughs> I love this game. I really do. What is that? What is that? I didn't even... <laughs> Listen. Just <laughs> talk while fucking <laughs> freaking me out. <laughs> it looks like what? the joy is happy. What are you? Are you... <laughs> You got too much time on your hand, motherfucker. What the fuck is that? What do you think I've been doing for the past 20 minutes? Is that where your head is? I thought you fell asleep during his shout outs. <laughs> Phil, I thought you fell asleep during Phil's shout outs. You're even blinking. Look at you. <laughs> what are you doing? I looked like I had a stroke. What the it's, fuck? It's really almost Just like when that out. acid trip hit. That, yeah, like, that's yeah. fucking weird. Oh All right. Oh my God. Just keep talking, Cloud. Shout right. out. <laughs> Shout out to my grandkids who are going to have to see this in fucking 20 years. Oh, so, man. So, I don't know. Listen. Shout out to Anthony Kozinski. I don't yes. know if you shouted him out. Heisenberg, I had to mute him because he brought politics up. But Oh, jeez. You know, hey. Shout out because I like what you said. Craig McQueen, Bears Truth 9, and Kofi Ohamang. Look at that. Kofi. And my wife And my wife and my kids. Nice. There you go. What a show. Hopefully you hear it if you're on the podcast version or you can listen to it real quick on the business side, Shane. They can find it. At all Keeping time. it 100 can be found on all podcast streaming apps. iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Overcast, CastBox, Deezer, and finally, officially on Google Music and Podcasts. Yeah. It's Keeping It 100 with Phil and Shane. There you go. We've officially done it all. Gotta love you guys. We'll see you back next week. We don't have a guest yet. That's the first time. We've got no one scheduled. Is next week the week we're going to go on Thursday? No, it's the week of the 18th. Okay, so the week of the 18th, we're going to go on Thursday. Next week, live Wednesday here on Shy City Sports Presents keeping it 100 this has been a shy city sports presentation and a tape never lies network production keeping it 100 thanks for tuning in to the tape never lies network